on the library use roll. If you look at your character sheet, next to pretty much everything on your sheet are macros, the little D20 icons. And there are green ones and there are gray ones. For the most part, we're going to use the green ones, which is just kind of a straight up roll. The library use roll was used uh, was rolled using a green uh, a green icon, and what it does is it shows you the value of your skill. So the person who rolled this has a 65 in library use. Then the second number shows half of that value for a hard success, and then the third value is for an extreme success, which is one fifth of the value. And then it shows what you rolled, and then it shows what um, level of success you had with that roll. So that's just your basic Thank roll. Thank you, baby. <laughs> well, I had to... Hold on. So you've got so you've got your full value, half your value, and one fifth your value. When you click the gray icon, it takes into uh, consideration any bonus dice that you have. If I say, if you tell me that you want to make a skill roll on something, and I say, okay, you can roll that with a bonus die. Basically, what you're doing is you're rolling two percentiles, and you're taking the better result since you have a bonus mm -hmm. die. When you say the gray one, you just mean the one on the left, correct? And the green yes, one's yes. the one on the right? Okay. Right. Yeah. For the most part, we're going to use the green ones. But if you have any bonus dice added or penalty dice subtracted from your roll, we're going to use the gray the gray one. And what that does, like, for example, one of the dodge roll here, it shows the, the your value. Uh, the first number is what you have as, a, as your dodge skill, 35. Then it shows half of that and then one-fifth of that. And then it shows what you rolled. Your first roll was an 18, and your second roll was an 87. For the most part, we're only going to be using one bonus die or one penalty die. The third number is in case we you get two bonus dice or two penalty dice. So what basically what you're doing is you're rolling two two percentile dice twice, and you're taking the better result, which would be the 18. And that will show you under zero down here shows without any bonus dice or without any penalty dice what you got. The plus one means one bonus dice the minus one means one penalty dice so for example say you're making a dodge roll and you have one penalty die so you roll an 18 and an 87 and you have to take the worst result which is an 87 which mm. which means where it says minus one you get that one penalty die you would fail okay and bonus dice and penalty dice come into play like if you have cover in combat somebody might get a penalty dice to try to hit you you know they might get two penalty dice if you're hiding behind a concrete wall, you know. Um, but there are, you know, there are things during the game where I'll determine whether you get a bonus dice or a penalty die um, for. Uh, but for the most part, we're just going to be using straight up rolls with the, the green icons. And it'll just it'll just show your skill value, half of your skill value, and one fifth of your skill value. I may even I may even start going like you know, boy, okay, you guys are in the library looking for something very. Uh, obscure or discreet or whatever. And I, I might say, well, you need to make a library use roll with a hard success. So you'd have to roll, you know, half your library use value to to get a success in that. Just as an example. Okay. Um, and I've tried to figure out how this guy has constructed these macros for these character sheets, and I just can't really do it. So maybe some point I'll be able to figure it out and update our macros down here at the bottom so we can use those macros. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to try to start rolling everything from our sheets, more or less. Yeah, these look like pretty complex macros. Yeah, but but they're, they're so much, such a big improvement over the old character sheets, in my opinion, that oh, yeah. uh, I, I can't not use them since, since I understand them now. It's a lot more functional. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's go over here to look to the future. A quick second, okay? Yeah, I need just one minute too, and we'll start. Are they oh, Alex, genetically sure modifying? Get, oh, Alex, make sure you get OBS up and recording, please. It's it's been recording. Are they genetically modifying pumpkins over here, or what is that? <laughs> I was kind of hoping that you might notice some of the stuff in that picture there. It's kind of... Um, Is that a fez there, or a bucket? There, there are some hints in that little uh, graphic there. Yeah, alright. So let's take a look at some, some things here. 
There's a we gotta watch. be careful of this bowling ball. Yeah, we have to be careful of the bowling ball. Be careful the... of uh, VCR TV combinations. Yes, and also <laughs> right above the bowling ball, you'll notice there's a phantom watch. Um, some sort does of. Does he have one on his wrist too, right there? He does. He does have one. Um, he looks like he's from the Renaissance. And then there's this What's... weird pumpkin robot Gizmotron over here. And that looks like a rat or something. I don't know. Oh, okay. Where it is? Right here is... This, like, thing. What is that? Oh, what that is. That guy looks like he's wearing a mask or something. That or he's actually yeah. from the Renaissance. <laughs> and there's, like, a, oh, there's, like... There's a cord going through these uh, coconuts or these uh, whatever these are. Yeah. There's an electrical cord or something. And there's like a tentacle going up the rod on the machine. And these look connected too. What are these connected by? Some sort of weird organic Tube? material. I'm going with yarn. Yes, it could all just be a yarn grower. And that's... Let's not look at the or ignore the obvious danger sign right here. Yes. <laughs> well, I ignored that. The mo I I haven't seen that until you just pointed it out. <laughs> also, the angles of this is is weird. It's just it doesn't make any sense. Is that a wall? Now what's he, What's he dropping here? Like his hand is opened up and he's dropped something. It looks like he... I don't know. It's some sort of cloth or something. But how is the TV sitting on the floor at that angle if the floor is at, like that... Um, <laughs> you guys may be overthinking. The <laughs> <laughs> guy can't draw a good perspective, so we're taking it too far. <laughs> Maybe you may, may have got a little Mulder X-Files here for a minute. Yep. Some of that is definitely right. The other parts are just, you know... And what is the bowling ball laying on? No! <laughs> Our opportunity's gone. Yep. Yeah. You can mull that over later. Alright, so... so we got... Sean, just... I added my, uh... Remember last time I had my double-barreled sawed-off shotgun? But then I went and I got a real shotgun with, like, a real barrel. Let's go ahead. Range. All right, let's take a look at that. So, um... Oh, and somebody said on Discord this today that they were going to record the spell on our, on, our, uh, on our tape recorder? Yes, that was something we talked about the I'm last time. I'm not sure that any spell would work from a tape recorder. I mean, how many, how many magic points does a battery have? I replied to that, and that said, you can do that, but it's not guaranteed to work. I think it would be purely Well, I think the thing is, is... Also, it'll be the a idea... distraction. Yeah, it could be a distraction. In other words, oh. if you had two people, if you had a couple people, you know, if you someone clicked the tape recorder on and you had someone else chanting it, you know... Um, it worked in Evil Dead, so... It did right. work there, in there Evil you go. Dead. And that's basically our lives right now so I'm thinking maybe you're right I've kind of 180'd on this <laughs> alright so I changed that shotgun Tom it's just basically changes your range 10, 20, 50 now my question okay. is so I, I still have my sawed off one though oh okay I, that, the, the sawed off one is covered like in my trench coat, like on a rope underneath my shoulder. But I have the uh, the big one for opportunities like this. Okay. My question is: Are we actually going to shoot into a crowd trying to hit Carl Stanford? That's kind of my question too. There's there's like a hundred innocent people standing around. Right, right. I mean, that's exactly. That was my that was my concern before. I mean, if we just, I think it's great to have the truck there with gun in it um ace well that's why i wanted to do this uh that's why i wanted to have the, the night gaunts or whatever the heck go and find his house and then we could 
surprise him, ambush him there, so that way there wouldn't be innocent bystanders that we'd be shooting a browning machine gun into. And I think it's going to be it's going to be hard to find his abode. Well, that's why we have the weird interstellar. I can smell a dude from a trillion miles away. Aliens to do it. Get the same result you got from the wife thing. Uh, Unless he doesn't have a wife. I mean, he doesn't have a wife. Yeah. If he doesn't have a wife, they can't find him. But what I'm saying is, if he's bouncing from Boston to New York to this, or you know, where is his home? I mean, unless it's the annex, he's got to have somewhere to stay. It would seem like the best place to catch this guy is at this location. It is sadly, but that means How we, we have yeah. to fire into. Oh, well, not necessarily. Not necessarily. We could, and you know, people who aren't known could blend in and walk up and start the incantation. Oh, shoot him up! Uh, what uh, Kennedy style? Not Kennedy. What's the guy's name? Exactly, Malcolm X style. Basically, like yeah, yeah. He, I mean, we we blend in with the crowd. We we sit down. Yeah, we could. We could just. Yeah. Which we don't want to be shooting the crowd. We want to be shooting the cultists, right? Exactly. If we if we were able to blend in and, and walk in and sit down and kind of you know come around to the side, I don't know how packed this place is. Well, I mean, did Lee? Did you cover some of the stuff we talked about during the week? Not really. No, I haven't talked to okay. anybody about that. So here's what. So, so wait, hold on. on. Before you say anything, Kyle, hold on. Hold that thought. All right. So my understanding is, okay, you guys, were, you guys are back at the bungalow, and you're talking about this plan. Um, you you have found through your contacts, Jacob, that uh, Bobby and Bugsy Santelli are are willing to to do another job for you. Um, so you have access to them, and from what I remember here, here's some other stuff that you guys talked about. Um, trucks you guys are going to get a couple of pickup trucks I believe yep um, we need you guys one. got 12 more 12 more sticks of dynamite <laughs> that's Tom but yes we, we'll all take them you have the two browning machine guns which I assume you would be mounting on the trucks I think you guys were talking about that yeah. yep okay all right, so yeah, you guys are back at the bungalow. Um, we also have some hand grenades. July 29th, it's a Tuesday evening, and uh, the meeting is tonight at the meeting hall. So, Kyle, go. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. <clears throat> Since there's no chance that at full auto on the 30 cals, the dock or the ambassador can miss we should put both of those guys on the third just like statistically you can't miss you have to okay. roll a 98 it can happen but you'd have to roll a 98 so that's pretty much both that's of you okay. should, should be able to you know like open so an yeah. amazing amount of havoc now jacob has a insanely high chance to hit with his bar, which none of the other players do. So he should stay on the bar. So as far as like attack positions, the dock and hail definitely on the 30 cows in the different trucks. All right. And then Sparky, since he's good with hand to hand, I would like to, what I want to do is take the pentagram that has to be drawn on the ground and draw it on a sheet. Well, hold, so on, hold, I can, hold on, hold on, hold on. We don't have yeah, to draw a pentagram. Yeah, the pentagram is only required for the first part of the spell, which you guys don't know yet. Yep, it's okay. only required for reviving, not destroying. Right, okay, so perfect. We don't even need it. Mm-hmm. So Sparky, who's good with hand-to-hand, can go in. They don't even know him anyways and can have the recording of the chant but also know the chant himself 
And that way, one way or the other, at least be saying it close to Carl Stanford while like you that. guys are spraying lead death down upon the crowd or the, oh the cultists, God. the crowd if we need to, in order to shrink this guy down into like the stuff we saw as either um, the materia, the materia. So yeah, we're gonna so make the doc that has notorious a, and Al Capone was. Yeah, the the doc has a momentary uh, 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 conflict of uh, of uh, good versus evil. So but much he, of he, this. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, see, but he quickly snaps out of it and says, "No, it's better this way. We got to get rid of this guy." So it's, much. We got to break a few eggs. So much for that Hippocratic oath, Doctor Van Helsing. <laughs> yeah. Here. Well, here, here, here's, here's I've, a, I've seen what these guys can do. The they must stop. So let's say let's Doc's say, a little crazy right now too. By the way, let's say you go, let's say, let's say you go in, Kyle. Right, you you get in there. Boy, My some, name is Sparky, please. Uh, Sparky, let's say <laughs> in there. We're gonna have to have some signal because the only way we'll be able to use the thirty cows is we pull the truck directly up to and basically block the front entrance, right? With the we, we, I would say we've, yeah, the signal, I don't know, man, like this guy disappears. So we've got to start. Yeah. But the gunfire has to start at the exact time the chant does. Like instantaneously. Uh, I'm now trying to figure I'm out the thinking, sequencing on it. I, I'm thinking instead of getting the guy down alone, I think that you should probably like chloroform the guy. Like take a rag filled with chloroform and stuff that over. I don't top. think I don't think we not can get to that, him. Not only ambassador. He, he disappeared so fast the last time. I, I'm I, I like it. I wish I wish that that was the case, but I you don't, don't think see that you this. can just walk up to him and then boof, because it'll That's mute him first of all. It'll silence him so he That's, can't cast any spells. We saw him. He was wasn't he? Didn't he appear on the stage and say a little couple words and right? Didn't he appear from the back and walk up on front of the stage, right? I think Who? so. Lostalis Black? No, 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 not Lostalis Black. Carl Stanford, the, the one meeting we went to, right? Uh, yeah, no, he, he was at the side. He was, he was at the swap meet. Dealings. Yeah, he was at the swap meet, and he did say a few words, I believe, and just introduced one of the people in the crowd who gave this rousing speech. Uh, he's just a businessman. Just thinking if Lestal's whack is there and it's a big meeting, he'll probably Stanford should probably be on stage with them. But we need to do this before, at, like Wait. when they're setting up. We need to do this before they get yeah. into the meeting hall. Because the problem is going to be if this spell takes two rounds to cast and he can disappear in one round, we can't. He's gone. Well, I'm assuming that once we start the incantation, that he will be somewhat frozen. Uh, that's hmm. a very dangerous assumption. I agreed. Agreed. But, I mean, you know, they've. if you looked at all those jars in the room we went to, um, not all of those jars compellingly went or held them for two rounds. So you've got to think there's something to that, right? Because otherwise there would be no jars. Knocked, I think they just knocked people out, dude. They just knocked them out and turned them into their essential salts. Maybe. Which is why I think it would be wise to to at least try and get this guy so that he's so that he can't utter um, the spell to get out of here as fast well, as possible. Well, hold on a second. What you said doesn't make sense. The, the salts, uh, the bottles you guys have contain essential salts. Okay. Yes. Well, let's establish that. So these are dead people that you guys are carrying around in these bottles. Yes. Where do you where do you get dead people? The graveyard, man. You dig their bodies up, you collect no. the bodies, and then you you bring them back from the dead. And you oh wait, yeah, them, I don't know what I'm them. talking about. <laughs> now, now the materia, you can be almost sure that these are just kind of dead people. They probably dug up, but the custodes, you're still not quite sure. Or wait, no, I do know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about raising them from the dead and then putting them back as souls. Yeah. They have to like do something. They're not just gonna sit there quietly. 
Right. That's like, where the thirty caliber Brownings come in play. Yeah. Or maybe all those torture implements that you guys found down there. Yep. Good point. Well, our torture implements tonight are multiple bullets of lead. Uh -huh. Sadly, though, we're going to kill so many people. So many well, people. Well, no. Well, no right, I mean, but think of how no, many people no, we're no, going to no. save. Well, if you guys are talking about trying to intercept these guys before they get into the, the actual meeting hall, casualty should be relatively low if if we have to go into the meeting hall i mean it'd be more an attack on the stage right not not spraying into the crowd well i'm saying we're gonna okay so i'm thinking that while he is walking to the, uh, like either off of the street into the meeting hall we're going to have to be shooting from wherever we are like you know we're gonna have to be shooting when they when he's here or when he's crossing the street or whatever before he gets in the meeting hall. We're going to have to blast this whole entire section. Mm -hmm. And that'll kill a lot of people. It'll kill Carl Stanford, but it'll kill a lot of people. So just so you guys Can understand, we... I may have jumped the gun a little bit last session. At the end of last session, I described a limousine or something pulling up and Los Dallas Black getting out. Oh, we haven't yes. gotten to that. Yeah. We haven't gotten to that point yet. So don't don't even take that into consideration. You guys aren't even there yet. We didn't. Thanks for you just reminding know, me. Yeah, you just know that there's going to be a meeting. So you haven't actually seen Mr. Black yet. Yeah, all right. Um so it seems to me like we have two options. We can either shoot shoot up the entire place and shoot everybody as they go into the meeting hall. Just plain and simple just blast the entire crowd going in including uh carl and Lostalas. or we can do something sneaky and try and grab one of the two and then shoot them up that would be sparky you'd have to get up close on him no problem but I'm all then in. the Brownings are going to kill Sparky. Not necessarily. He'll get cover behind the body, I guess. Well, if if if, if he's dealing with it, then I'm not going to shoot. I mean, I'll be able to see if Sparky's being successful. Yeah, and then we can, and then we can just just screw Here, here's, everything here's and, thing, and run here's, up and shoot the guy. Here, here's something. Here's something to consider. So both when, when this guy came out before. He had two bodyguards with him, right? Yes. That was before the that was before the attempt on his life. Yep. Yes. With, have, more, with more of the coming out of the annex. Yeah. So he's going to have more security. He'll have at least two more, right? I mean, that's kind of, right. Which I guess means that we do have to just open up with the Browning, and then we have to get to his body uh, and and salt it. Like that's the that's deal. If, and well, the, if... the bonus round is well. The bonus to it is he he was up on a in a, on an elevated stage, yeah. So you guys, we, as far as like to... firing directly into the crowd, you won't have to do that. You can fire at him with his fucking cadre of Wait a minute. wackadoos up on the stage. Kyle, I think we have a means... fundamental difference in what we're talking about. Are we saying oh, okay. that we're doing this? Are we saying that we're shooting into the meeting hall, or are we saying we're shooting from the street onto the sidewalk? Well, there's two. There's two. Uh, I would say pull a truck right up to the the huge opening there. As I recall, block we couldn't it see and... the top of the stage from the entryway. Okay. Right, Dad. Is that the deal? At night, probably not. <laughs> We'd have to have people behind the building ready to kill whoever the heck tries to get out. I mean, the, the, there's, the ruler there's two is about right. There's two possibilities, right? Either set up and we see them as they're actually trying to get into the meeting hall, in which case we open fire on them. That's what I'm talking about. And, and try to collect the body or see him and i mean him by carl stanford we can try another approach and maybe try to infiltrate the meeting hall or do something like that right right but we can't get the brownings into the meeting hall. so okay actually, let's do that. actually hold on hold on we could if we have to we could back the truck right up to the I don't, how mm -hmm. wide is it sean six feet across seven feet six, tall six feet yeah uh-huh the doorway yep 
able to block the doorway with the back of the the back of the truck and have the machine gun there, right? Yeah, but KKK style. Uh, what, that's an option. Uh, that's an option. That's yeah. an option. I'm not saying we'll do that. How tall is the doorway? Seven, seven feet. feet. Mm -hmm. So that way, there's no way out because the truck will be blocking the way. Seven feet. That's an option. That's just yeah. something to consider. I'm not saying we'll do that, but that's that's a good thing to remember, right? Like we if we be able to see just conceptually, that would mean that the barrel of the machine guns pointed into the meeting hall. But how are we going to see in? We'll be at the top of the of the door. Yeah. Um. Here, here's kind of a thing of the meeting hall down here. Uh, kind of a little schematic of the meeting yeah, hall. Yeah, so yeah. There are, yes. there are like pews on both Sorry, sides. Set up almost like a church, you know? Why? So, Just saying, it would be, it's an option. It's an, if we, if we, if we are set up outside and, he, and they show up or Carl Stanford shows up or, or a target, we'll, we'll deal, we'll deal with it that way, right? Grab the body and get the hell out of there. We always we, we can try to infiltrate and if we have to drive the truck up there we can use it to block the entrance. It's just an option. We don't have to do that. And kind yeah. of regress out of the building. And you guys are assuming that Stanford's gonna be there too. What if he's not? Or what if he is and you don't see him? Or what if Possible. there's so many what ifs? Well it's eighty feet from the doorway to the back. If That's we don't right. see Carl, then I think we just abandon. And here's the other what if. If Jacob goes in there and starts casting the spell, chances are Carl Stanford is going to notice him. So that means Sparky's all by himself. You know, we I could know. have people on, on and all, like, okay. We could have people set up in the back, right? We could have people set up. Uh, we could have one of us back here, maybe me or something. And I have, I have a gun uh, ready. And then the moment Carl Stanford steps on the stage, you back the truck right into the doorway, and we both start opening fire. Then we have somebody behind the meeting hall, just in case indeed he does run for whatever reason, instead of use his magical powers uh, to to stop him stay to stop him backstage. Because all we really need is one person manning the gun. Uh, we have our driver. Uh, then we have one person back here. And everyone else can be basically contingencies. We could have another person yeah, back well, here, too. Or we could have some... Would, you would also want someone casting the incantation. Yeah, we could have Well, that, somebody... that would be Sparky. That, so, be I sparky, think... Right. So, <laughs> for this plan, so you're saying, uh, you know, the... Hail back here somewhere, right? Right. And then, oh, hold on. I switched to the, uh, sorry. So hail back here. Yep. And then the doctor on the 30 cal backed up here. Yep. Um, Sparky, I Jacob guess. Jacob here. Yeah. Sparky back here. So that way Sparky can be casting the incantation. I could be casting the incantation while firing, too. Um, Let's go back over here. You guys can use your tokens to figure shit out. You got your tokens down there. You can drag them around. Is there any exit way out scared. the back, Sean? Apparently not. It's probably downstairs, man. In yeah. the truck. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. guys did find out that there apparently is a basement connected to this place somewhere. So that's so a then maybe. I think so. So Sparky then... goes in and sits up front. No, because we're going to be blasting Bas the whole entire hall with a machine gun. We don't want him to get hit. That's why I'm in the back corner where it's out of range of the arc. Well, I think I've got got to be relatively close to you guys are just gonna have to watch out for me <clears throat> you, you can you can call enough for your shots if you if, if yeah if sparky's on the left hand side we'll shoot on the right hand side no problem 
please yeah. spark, yeah. spark and, 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 and to say that it's to say the incantation since now there's no pentagram which i thought there had to be a pentagram involved since there's no pentagram involved he can he can duck down he can lay on the ground and say the fucking incantation correct yeah. Dad, do we do we know the details of the incantation? Do do we know a range, or if you have to have the target in sight? Sight. Uh, so it's it the range is sight. That's your assumption. Okay. Okay. This changes that's things. That's good. Yeah, so that's then, great. Yes, Sparky could just be back here. How's this? He we we wait for Sparky to to start the incantation and hit the tape player at the same time, right? The ambassador opens up. That's our signal to drive up with the car and open up. Well, I think oh, the I'll moment that he steps onto want. stage, I think the moment he steps onto stage, Sparky begins that incantation. Everybody just begins opening fire, essentially. I mean, Doc starts Brooklyn. blasting the, the crowd with the machine, or blasting the stage with a machine gun. I start, I guess I'll grab a... I'll grab a pistol, or I guess I might have a rifle and a trench coat or something, and I'll start firing that. Uh, you keep an eye out for what's going down. I don't know. Maybe maybe staying in the back isn't a good idea. Actually, that'll get us. You should. You may, we should we should have you ready for contingency. Like, what happens if the doctor gets shot or something? So he's gonna have to man the machine gun, jumping back up there to take his place, you know, or just keeping an eye out for goons. Yeah, good. that sounds good. Well, that's what the second. Uh, that's what the second howitzer. Howitzer is for the second truck. We will uh, spray the outside for goons as they approach. Yeah. Second truck. So you want me in the second truck, basically? Yes. Bags, machine gun. Yep. Where's Prince gonna be? With Jacob. Be with me. I guess in the front seat or whatever. Oops. Chewing on a raw bone. All right, I guess that's the best we're going to be able to do. The signal will be you guys opening up, and then Tom Tom's truck will back up. Is that the? No, he's going to be. The signal is when Carl steps on the stage. Then everybody begins to act. I start firing. Sparky begins chanting, and the doctor begins blasting the stage. Yeah, how am I going to know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. How am I going to know he's on stage if I'm outside? Oh. In other words, Sparky starts the incantation hit open fire. When you open fire, that's the signal for Tom to back the truck up and jump on. Yeah. That's going to take a I'm going to lose a round or two on that. No, you're not. Oh. We have a driver. Do we have a cell phone? <laughs> or a walkie-talkie. So oh shoot, dude, that's a great. We should use the. That's what we should use the the uh, track for the the tracky thing. It's a the tracky recorder. thing. The uh, the tape recorder. We should use the tape recorder for that. We could use that for signals. I think a gun's a lot more effective. You yeah. opening fire will be pretty. It'll be pretty clear yeah. what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, I couldn't yeah. hear anything over the gunfire. <laughs> I'll be right back. The Sparky starts the incantation, hits the tape player. You open fire. Well, you know, you have the driver. That's a signal for the driver to back you up to the yeah. entrance and fucking lay in right. with the machine gun. And that'll right? only take a couple seconds. Just a quick ramp. Back to the escape car, and I'll I'll be in the uh, truck with the machine gun covering. And just make sure that door stays open, then, guys, in the back. Oh, it's it's wide open, anyways. Okay. There's no there's no there's no doors to it, as far as I know. Oh, okay. There's no door in the front. Right. There's there's no back door either that we know of. I thought there was. There's a back door. It looks like it's on top of the stage. That's probably the door down to the basement. Well, yeah, but remember, like, when we did the hit, I guess those guys walked around from the front all the way around to the side of the building? I think they I Yes, they did. Yep, they, they did. walked around the side of the building. Yeah, there's no exterior back door. 
I remember because these guys, because these guys are truly evil. They don't have backdoor exits. Evil. Yeah, well, well their they backdoor probably... exit is their magical sword cane that makes them friggin' go to Rome. Who, who, who does that? Magic box. Yeah, they have backdoor exits in their in their cabinets. Like. Yep. I'm back. John, are these Brownings the um the M1919s or are they the water cooled? Water cooled. <laughs> There's surplus. Also, uh, let's talk about a little bit about skills here. Um, I know Lena has a newfound machine gun skill. Yeah. Should he be the one to fire? Yeah, I'm not going to implement the new uh, automatic fire rules quite yet. They're going to work just God. the old ones did. Um, but he does have a base skill for, uh, 70, yeah. machine guns, so he's almost guaranteed to hit if he's the one that's firing, because he knows how to control the gun. Yep. So maybe we should have the dock with Prince, and then have Jacob be the one to fire. Yeah. I mean, remember, the only real drawback with the automatic weapons at this point, firing that machine gun, even with somebody who's unskilled, is you can fire 20 rounds. 20 bullets in one round of combat, but you roll a d20 to see how many bullets hit. So there's always a chance of rolling a, you know, a two or a, or a three. That's just kind of the, the way it works. Uh, do we know how long it takes for the incantation to happen? Cool. Two. Okay. It doesn't matter then, basically, Sean. As far as. No, it doesn't really. Yeah, two, two rounds. rounds. Okay. Well, I think this is our plan, Dad. All right. Wait. Am I changing uh, places or no? No. No. It doesn't make any difference because okay. you have to roll a ninety-eight or a ninety-nine. And it's really just dependent upon the roll of your, you know, how many hit. Which I'd yeah. Have to if roll you roll, if that. you even if you roll a ninety-eight, you still hit. It's okay. a ninety-nine and a hundred where you're yeah. fucked. Unless they can dodge. Right. Um. So yeah, and remember that is a thing. You know, dodge is a thing. So. Can they dodge that many bullets? Uh, probably not. You can only get to dodge the first hit. Okay. Um, so you don't need to tell me your plan. You just need to tell me when you arrive. Let's say it's like early evening. The meeting is at 10 p.m. tonight. We'll go ahead and arrive at 12 o'clock. If we can get a good shot at this guy before he even so much as gets to the stage, if we can get sure. him on the street or something, then this that would be golden. Stake it out. We'll park a truck on one on one side, and park we another truck a... on this side. Yep. And then uh, is, is that how you're gonna do it? We're gonna have one over here, kind of off the street. Yep. And then another one over here on this side. Yep. Yep. All right. You got Bobby driving one and Bugsy driving the other. Um, we're gonna have the we're gonna have <laughs> Bobby. This... We're going to have this truck on the other side of the street, so that way it can quickly back up right into the... Into the we, want, we want to make sure that Bobby knows that what he needs to do is he needs to make it so that the Browning machine gun will be perfectly in this doorway when he backs up. Yeah, well, the first thing Bobby does when he sees the machine gun all bolted down onto the bed of the pickup, he asks if he can be the guy who shoots it. <laughs> but uh but he's like ah oh, you know he they understand though you know they're wheelmen so their job is to drive and that's it but he's he seems pretty uh oh he's pretty... got an exciting freaking job oh wait yeah. he wants to sean, shoot it sean we'll yeah. also we'll also bring the the two buicks close by so we can get to those for our getaway in case we have to ditch the trucks Right. Does Bobby have... feel does Bobby feel confident he can do that? All right, so you're gonna stage kind of two getaway cars as well. Gotcha. Absolutely. All right, we'll go uh, one one over here. We'll go one over here. We'll make them a different color. So those go a lot faster than a freaking truck, man. Yeah, the trucks are are pretty slow, man. Does Bobby feel confident in his ability to? To back a truck up into a small seven foot space? Of course he does. These guys are professional. He's, he feels Italian confident on it. Yeah. Hey, he's forget like, about it. He's like, what you, he's like, what you think, mister? <laughs> you hired the right guys, trust me. 
right, good. So as long as we get paid, everything is going to go nice and smooth. Right, Bugsy? Bugsy nods. Pasta, meatball, forget about it. There we go. I'm walking here. He says smooth like glass. <laughs> okay. With a well, Russian accent. Moose and squirrel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moose and squirrel? <laughs> 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 All right. So, so is this is this a situation here? We've got Hale, and we've got Sparky going into the meeting hall. Not at twelve. I'm not saying right now, but this is basically the plan, right? I mean, yes, that way. Now the reason that we're inside of the meeting hall and in the back corners is because that's outside of the arc of right. the machine guns blast. Well, well, since you guys are going to be going into the meeting hall, I, I want you each to describe yourselves and what you look like. What's how wearing? You guys should definitely shave your, if you have beard, shave your beard, change your haircut. So All right, I'm going to shave different. my beard. I'm going to use my my wonderful booze money to buy myself a, uh, a realistic looking wig. Um, hey, uh, you actually have um, in your possession, Hale, uh, among your things in your, your, uh, C case or with your chest or whatever you carry around all your shit in. You have an old fez from the Moose Lodge that you once belonged to. I mean, it might be a good idea to wear a fez, right? I'll keep so that to on. Fit in. <laughs> I don't want to wear it. I want to look as non conspicuous as humanly possible. Okay, so you're shaving. What are you wearing? Um. Guys, what's non conspicuous? What were they wearing last time? Wasn't it just like businessmen in suits and stuff? Yeah, they're yeah. just kind of nicely dressed or whatever. But I just want to i want to know what you guys look like and what you're carrying. Can I, wear, can I pull a Saul Goodman and wear the exact same thing that Carl Stanford was wearing? <laughs> well, Stanford's always wearing like, you know, silk suits and, you know, business get-ups. Perfect. Re really nice, expensive business suits. Perfect. Brown, usually. Excellent. Brown is very non conspicuous. All right, brown it is. Okay. A brown silk suit made just like his. Also, so I'm the going ambassador to keep... is dressed like Stanford. I'm okay, going go to ahead. keep the fez on me, and I'm going to wear big Carl Stanford glasses. No, I'm not. I'm going to wear square glasses. All right. What do you have in your pockets? Uh, what have I got in my pockets? Is, um, what else are you taking and going to be taking in with you? I'm going to take my sword cane. Okay. I'm going to take a... Um, I'm going to take a, a brown... Hmm. Okay, so... <laughs> this is going to sound like a weird question. Is there a rifle that I can, like... Have... Yes. yes, there is. <laughs> oh, I'm also wearing my flak jacket. That's an incredible Whirling thing. moose. Okay, so you got your flak jack jacket underneath your suit. Yes. Okay. As do I. It's I have my of, flak jacket on. It's pretty bulky, dude. It's not like a modern bulletproof vest. It's a flak jacket. That's you know, fine. That like artillery men wear, you know? That's great. I dig it. It's kind of bulky. It might look kind of funny, actually. Um, now, that you've, now that you've got it on, you can barely get your coat buttoned. Well, no, I would have, I would have asked it. I would have, when I had this this thing custom tailored three days ago. Wait, wait. <laughs> no, no. I'm just telling you straight up. It's a flak jacket. You look like an artilleryman walking in there. Now hold on, hold though. on though. We've been planning this for that like. That goes for you too, Sparky. What day is it? What's it? That? We've been planning. The issue gonna, is like flak jackets I'm, underneath business suits. It's like kind of. I'm, wait, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to tell you what I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm working on. I'm waiting. I'm waiting till the the, the ambassador gets finished. Right. Let's <laughs> let's finish this up, ambassador. What what do you got? I'm I'm just saying you can wear the flak jacket, but it might be a little conspicuous. That's fine. Over that, I'll wear a big brown trench coat. You can tell people you have some kind of medical condition and you have to wear the flak jacket or something. I don't know. It's a big... Yes, I'll be talking to a lot of people in this meeting, I assure you. Just put a, just put a, big, just put a big sweater on and tell everybody you have the gout. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I what got is consumption, chest, you see? I've got chest gout. 
So, okay. So what <laughs> a giant sweater ought to be like, I have the cow. Big okay, brown so trench coat. <laughs> so you've got your sword cane. We haven't decided whether you have the flak jacket. What else do you have? You I've have decided that I have my flak jacket because I'm going to wear a big brown trench coat. Okay. And, and you got your sword cane. What else? Um, I'm going to take the 45 Martini Henry rifle in the, um, in the... You haven't really thought this out, have you? No, I have. I have. It's just <laughs> concealing a Martini yeah, rifle. Yeah, a Henry a rifle. Martini you know, that's, rifle. That's like Martin an 18, Henry rifle. that's like an 18 pound rifle. You know what I'm saying? But it's one. also the small, the shortest rifle. That Wait a minute. I know of. I know. Lee, you can tell me. Is the Henry Martini, is that a bolt action or is that a lever action? That's a lever action. <laughs> it's right? a lever action. It's, yeah, a breech, it's, like, it's a breech loading weapon, and yet it's, it's a, a gargantuan round. Big man. fucking piece of iron. Five, it's huge. That's five, probably, not the, it's probably not a good choice to be inconspicuous <laughs> with, Alex. Good call. I'm going to grab one of the many sawed off uh, shotguns that we seem to have acquired. There you go. I don't know. I don't have that written down. Yeah. So, well, I've got one. You can use mine, and I'll use I'll have my yeah. big one. What skill? What skills do you have? Do you have? Do you have a rifle skill? Is that I your do. main I weapon have, skill? It's, it's rifle shotgun. So I actually rifle, have yeah. a fifty in that too. Awesome. That's a new a new rule. Rifle okay. is now combined with shotgun. So which makes sense. Because they're long, pointy, and look similar. Yeah, if you look at your if you look at your skill list on your character sheet, it'll it'll be under firearms and your right, regular right. skills. I'll keep a sawed-off shotgun in my big brown my bri my big brown coat, and I'm gonna wear glasses, okay. and I don't have a beard, and I do have a wig. And All right, well let me let me just tell you, you're gonna have to wear like a pretty big bulky overcoat because the flak jacket's taking up enough room already. If you want to get a you know shotgun in there too, you're gonna have to wear a big overcoat over everything. How's that? Absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. That big, brown, bulky okay. coat. You still look a little fishy, though. I'm just telling you right now. So that's it. You got the double barrel and the sword cane and the flak jacket. The pistol? <laughs> and who has a tape recorder? Me. Sparky. Okay. Sparky. All right. All right, Sparky, what do you got? Sean, uh, uh, first yourself. of all. What do you look like? Okay, first of all, I shave the sides of my head and I go with a straight, slick back SS cut. Right. Okay. Yeah. Then, uh, if I can that's, get a that's fake... like the East Coast cut, actually. Yeah. But... All right. So East Coast cut. I've got uh, my trench club shoved in the back of my trousers and my 1911, same place. All right. That trench club's got going to be pretty uh, uncomfortable. It is. It doesn't have but... spikes all over it. It is nasty. Uh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's my main weapon, so I got to bring yeah. it. Yeah, not necessarily like, concealable, but maybe. Okay. So, well, I'll put a heavier jacket on the outside. Go right. ahead, Lee. What? More like in in the shoulder holster position, like drop it from your arm, keeping it between your arm and your body. Yeah, you a, like if you had a like, coat on. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do have a coat on, and and then you know I just dress you know smartly. I've okay. got, uh, you know, a, a nice business suit on like everybody else there. And, you know, they're all fat and sure. broad. So I can get away with the jacket like that. But, you know, sure. and I've got the tape recorder with me and okay. uh, a small uh, electric flashlight is what I want. Okay. And um, I, I have the shirt on with the razor blade in the cuff and the other pieces that Jacob made us all. Mm-hmm. Right, everybody has one of those. Yeah, and, well, and I just want to make sure that's the one I put on, and then that's it, man. Okay. That and and, and my gigantic big balls to go in and read this incantation. <laughs> okay, excellent. Just one quick, just one quick note. We make sure that we get uh, the ambassador's rifle, and we throw it in the back of the bed of the truck. Where I'm sorry, say that again. Make yes. sure that we take the ambassador's martini rifle. Yeah. And we throw it in the bed of the truck where Tom's going to be with extra ammo. Okay. I also throw the elephant gun in there. If you need to grab another rifle, if you can get your rifles, man, they'll be there in the truck, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I throw that elephant gun in there, too. Okay. Okay, excellent. Oh, and the grenades, I guess. We 
have those grenades. Yeah, I've got a list of the Cthulhu kit right here. Um, All right, I yeah. added a 38 revolver and a sawed-off shotgun to my to my list of weapons. Okay. All right, so here's the deal. You guys arrive. How early are you arriving? The meeting starts Locked. at 10 p.m. 10 hours early. Ten hours early. So you're getting there in the afternoon? 12 o'clock. I, I think that's a little too suspicious. I, I would say let's get there maybe. Uh, it starts at 9. I don't think we want to have us. No, like no. The, hold on. The trucks park there at noon, and they just stay dormant, and nobody moves. The trucks are just parked like they're just random cars. You guys show up later to show up for the meeting. Yeah, I don't think we should show up at noon. I mean, I think yeah, we that's, could, I, I think that we should hide under the tarp with the machine guns. Personally, showing up too early could be a problem. Well, okay, having Tom in the back with the uh, whatever binoculars, I guess, and the rifles and the machine gun, uh, <laughs> and grenades and the dynamite, and the grenades and the, and the dynamite. Good about Having him there with the truck just in case he sees him so that we can show up and be like, you know, hey, did you kill him? No? All right. Well, we're continuing then. But on the off chance that he appears 10 hours early, I think I'll have a shot at him. I think we should just show up about 45 minutes early. I agree. Split, because split, up, split up in the trucks. Split up the some people want to, and then if they if we get them while they're coming in, we can we can attack. If not, we go with the second plan. And yeah. An hour early, really at the, the latest. Come on. Well, I mean, I think the thing is, is like these guys are going to be high alert. Like, how did they get hit last time? Cars from the outside. Well, how are we coming this time? Cars from the outside. That's fine. I mean, I think we should get there early, just not too early. An hour then, because I mean, these guys are the ones All that right. are running. An hour sounds thing. okay. We'll go with an hour. I mean, sounds good I to would me. show up an hour early for a thing I'm preparing. <laughs> well, you just might. Just to be clear, uh, Bobby and Bugsy are in the driver's seats of the trucks, not the cars. Yes, or, or vice versa. correct, correct. Okay, the cars are going to be there. Unless we want Bobsy in the, we want Bobsy in the truck, and then Bugsy in one of the cars, so that we can just quickly dash into the car and get out. Because we're not moving the other truck. The other truck's just going to be parked. Parked. That's a good point. Out goons. We all we all start we all start in the trucks. You know, if we catch them on the outside, right, we open up. If not, we go with plan two. At that point, the drivers go to the cars. No, because one of our drivers needs to be in the car so that we can drive it into the, into the building. <laughs> yeah, my driver has to be there to get me into the back door. So. Yep, so the other driver then can move out of the, out of the truck and into the car. The one in the in in Jacobs, uh, in Jacobs machine gun truck, that one can get out into the car, and then we'll all make a mad dash, um, for the car. We'll have to remember to remind Bub uh, Bugsy or Bobby and the guy who's <laughs> driving uh, the doctor's truck to pull out and. Uh, so that there is an exit for Dollar and, and Sparky, or else we are trapped in the meeting hall with a bunch of potentially angry undead monsters, which would suck. Actually, uh, Sean, I'll add one hand grenade to my loadout. Yes, that's an excellent idea. Okay. I love that and idea I, so if, much, I'm adding a grenade to mine as well. If, if I feel like I can... You know, put it on me without being noticed. I know I already have a ton of stuff on me, so. At this point, I don't even care. <laughs> I have a gigantic coat. I can fit all sorts of stuff in my gigantic coat. <laughs> Hopefully we'll catch them on the outside, but if not. Yeah, if not, if worse comes to worse, at least we can fall on our grenade. So. And my, Sean, my flak jacket is on, and it doesn't matter if it looks bulky. So. Nope. That's why I didn't ask what you guys have on outside because it doesn't really matter. You guys can be dressed like. Got it. 
Hobos. We do have the uh, we do have the sandbag situation we we had the last time. Okay, yeah, the the trucks are all bulked up with sandbags. We've got a little. It's all right, there. this is the plan. Guys, Here we go. You guys are some brave motherfuckers, I'll tell you. There's ah. evil afoot, man. That is not a good sign from the DM. Indeed. Indeed. <clears throat> there is evil afoot. All right. So before we proceed, can we take five here? Yes. Okay. Yeah, let's take five. Get some drinks. And get ready to buckle in for the ride, right? Yeah, buckle in for the ride. This could get weird. Okay. Oh, this is going to be ugly. Yeah. We all will die. That is... I don't think maybe I've never... I don't know, depending on what happens. I've maybe never seen so much mayhem in a game of Call of Cthulhu as this could cause. Well, if we all die... If we all die... What happens? What happens? Do we say... Our cousin's cousin's join <laughs> because we're on our cousin's table. We're starting to get low on mythos. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. tell you guys one thing if you do all die as Alex just suggested you're going to go out in a blaze of glory I'll tell you that all right any more words of warning from the game master <laughs> Alex was just talking to me here in the kitchen. He's like, what happens if we all die? I'm just like, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Oh, man. And I said something like, you know, this if this goes down as I'm expecting it to go down, this could be the most mayhem I've ever seen in the game of Call of Cthulhu, what you guys could cause here potentially. Well... And if you do all die, you'll certainly go out in a blaze of glory. That's for sure. Now, thinking about this, where are our books in case we all die? They're in a safe in the basement of the bungalow. All right, did I miss anything? We're all dead. <laughs> Not really. We're just We're talking about what happens if everybody dies. We're just wondering, like, what's going to happen. I just said, well, we'll just cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, that's Sean. That's I have my will. Sean. Yeah. My backup character is going to be the landlord of the bungalow. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> All right. So I might find a safe down there someday, if necessary. Right, yeah. yeah. That's actually, right. That would actually be a very Lovecraftian thing to do. Cool. 
All right. It's my so that was the cousin of the. Of the... <laughs> so we have a lineage plan in place. We're good. Yeah. Well, we can always figure something out. Yes, my backup uh, character is the cousin of the landlord of the bungalow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go carve ourselves a wit. Damn straight, man. All right, is everybody back? I think so. All right, let's do this. So you guys uh, go downtown. You guys are located kind of uh, out in the Bronx or something like that. And uh, so you drive downtown to Manhattan uh, to the meeting hall. And, uh, you know, you park your vehicles down the street just to get a good look. It's very dark. Um, and there are some, other than the street lamps, you really can't see much. Um, it looks like there are some vehicles parked outside the meeting hall, and there are a few men milling about out front by the street, just talking about an hour before the meeting is to start. So you get everything in the position. Uh, you, you get your Packards uh, parked across the street from the trucks here. Um, and more and more vehicles begin arriving and these just look like you know just regular guys for the most part some of them begin entering the meeting hall which seems pretty dark inside from your vantage point especially from across the street here uh the doctor and the ambassador have probably a pretty good look at the very front of the meeting hall it seems to be rather dark in there you can see some flicker of candlelight on the inside of the meeting hall as we drive up the street towards the meeting hall, seeing that there are other vehicles already there. Can I suggest that we park, um, we go back to the original plan of parking in front of this side of the, like, on this side of the street, just so that we don't get blocked. Just so that we don't have to, uh, traverse some cars to, uh, bash into the meeting hall. Agreed. <clears throat> Alright. Shit, all this stuff's on the token layer. Hold on. Yeah, because you're right. If that limo pulls up or whatever that we're not supposed to know about, it'll block us out. So, like, up here instead? Yep. Okay. Yes. That's a little... Yeah, that, that'll be easier. All right. Uh, so, you guys are watching, you know, people begin showing up and filing into the meeting hall. And it's about quarter to ten. And you, judging by, uh, you know, just your observations, it looks like a good 70 or 80 people have showed up so far. All men, all sort of, uh, you know, well-to-do types. They drive up in their, in their Packers, a couple Mercedes, you know, and they're all in their suits. Some of them are wearing fezes. Some of them appear to be foreigners. Uh, and they're all filing into the meeting hall. Now, just note, too, as you're looking at the map here, your tokens are not to scale, of course. Yes. Um, if you do want to see the scale, click on the ruler uh, tool at the very top left there. It looks like a it looks like a ruler. If you click on that, you can click and drag on the screen to show range. Is that proper scale? Such. It's, it's pretty close, yeah. That's about right. Because I think we said that it's... Uh... Yeah. It's about right. It's about right. Um, so now it's 10 minutes before the meeting starts and, you know, even more people are showing up. There's probably a good hundred people have shown up to this thing. Uh, no sign of Carl Stanford, no sign of Lestalis Black, uh, no sl no sign of this Brian Slim guy, uh, so far. Everybody give me a spot hidden roll. All right. The green one? The green yeah, click the green, the green button, yep. I mean, it's going to show in the first row, the first number is your your skill. So Time to get a hard success. success. Sweet. He rolled a 19. All right, Tommy, check that skill. The rest nice. of you, don't, don't check it, even if you succeeded, except for Tom. Tom, you notice uh, in this field... Uh, back here behind the meeting hall you see two men they seem to be uh, pacing the ground 
there's this pathway back here that you know of, right? And they seem to be kind of pacing around back there by the annex. And they look like uh, very similar to the, uh, what did we call them? The pale, pale Norsemen. Pale Norsemen. <laughs> They're very pale albino looking guys, and it's kind of hard to see in the dark, but the same same guys you guys encountered the other day in the hit. Uh, and they seem to be probably on guard uh, back here near the annex, walking back and forth down this pathway, back and forth. Mm. So he might be coming from back there, gentlemen. That's fine. We'll have a nice clear shot. So they definitely seem to be, you know, guards on duty, probably. They're all, they're looking around, you know, and they stop and talk to each other every once in a while. Very strange looking fellows, though, I should say. Um, and now the meeting, the meeting is about to start, you guys. All right, well, Sparky will make his way to the meeting hall. Yes, same. Okay. You get into the meeting hall, and it's very smoky in here, and the place is only lit by these candles uh, that are placed all around the room. Um, so it's very, you know, the lighting is very dim, um, and it's full of all sorts of uh, different people. Uh, you don't really recognize anybody. You don't see Carl Stanford. You don't see John Scott. You don't see anybody that you would recognize at this point. And uh, I can give you a bit of an idea of what you're looking at here in a second. Remember, they can change their appearance, guys. What's that? They can change their appearance, remember? Yep. I'm still thinking that we just shoot up the stage as soon as anybody steps on it. I mean, that's just... All right, so like I said, it's very smoky in here. Um, and everybody's kind of milling about. They have these tables set off to the side that appear to have like uh, decanters for coffee and, and tea and things like this. Everybody's smoking cigars, you know, and they're talking. And it's kind of loud in here with everybody talking. Um, but you don't see anybody, you know, it's, there's some, there's a few people in the crowd like wearing fezes, you know. Some of them do appear to be foreigners, the Europeans, uh, maybe a couple of dark skinned fellows in here. It seemed a little out of place to be honest um, and then a man gets up on the stage and he matches the description of Brian Slim you've all seen photographs of him or you've seen him in the photograph with Carl Stanford and he gets up on the stage um, and he gets everybody's attention and he says the meeting is about to begin gentlemen please have a seat and everybody begins sitting down at the uh, on the benches and on the stage, Brian Slim begins lighting these uh, very large candles um, in what appear to be like these silver bases. And the candles are black. And there's like six of them, six big, huge candles. And he lights the candles on the stage. And then you see the door in the back of the meeting hall open. And through the door appears a man in a business suit um, very large stature, muscular looking, and he has very dark features, um, dark skin, uh, dark mustache, these big bushy dark eyebrows, and he's also wearing this black fez. Um, and it's really kind of hard to d discern just upon first look what nationality he is. He could be, he looks maybe Middle Eastern, uh, possibly African, you're not sure. Um, but very, uh, very large, dark-skinned fellow, and he's got these sort of piercing eyes, and he steps up to this podium on the stage. And he says, Gentlemen, let us begin. And he takes a step back from the podium, and he raises both of his arms. And uh, he says, What do we know of the world and the universe about us our means of receiving impressions are absurdly few, and our notions of surrounding objects infinitely narrow. We see things only as we are constructed to see them, and can gain no idea of their absolute nature. Now, I should say at this point, anybody but Hale and Sparky 
certainly Jacob and the doctor would recognize what he's saying because this is the same exact thing that was said to you by Carl Stanford through, uh, through Edgar Cayce. He says, with five feeble senses, we pretend to comprehend the boundlessly complex cosmos. And his voice is very deep and baritone, you know, and it's filling this hall as he's speaking. I'm fiddling with the play button on the tape recorder as he starts talking, ready to start chanting at any second. Okay. We pretend to comprehend the boundlessly complex cosmos, yet other beings with wider, stronger, or different range of senses might not only see very differently the things that we see, but might see and study whole worlds of matter, energy, and life which lie close at hand yet can never be detected with the senses we have. And uh, everybody just, everybody's attem- attention is just wrapped upon while Stalas Black upon the stage. They're all just looking at him. Everyone is silent. And uh, he look, he turns and he looks at Brian Slim, who is standing on the side of the stage. And uh, Brian takes a couple of steps onto the stage and he begins a chant. It goes something like, Ang Dakta, Linka, Neblad Zin, Neblad Zin, Ang Dakta, Linka, Yog Sot Off, Yog Sot Off, Ang Dakta, Linka, Yar on the Ten. He starts this chant. And uh, Mr. Black says, Madness rides the star wind. Claws and teeth sharpened on centuries of corpses. Dripping death astride a bacchanal of bats from nigh black ruins of buried temples of Belial. And he joins in on this chant that everybody in the place is chanting this. Ang nocta linkta. Sparky doodle chant. All right, at this moment, I will uh, turn on the recorder and begin copying it with my voice. Okay. There's something wrong with Lostalis Black's eyes. And you can't really tear your eyes away from his as this chant continues. And both of you just become wrapped. With, uh, uh, you know, your attention is just incredibly fixed upon this guy and and sparky you stop kind of fiddling with your tape recorder and you're just kind of like in awe when you're watching this suddenly the chant stops and black says he turns to brian slim again he says the volunteers and uh slim kind of beckons to a couple of guys in the crowd who come up on the stage and he says these lost alec black says these will be our time travelers this evening and everybody starts clapping Yay! Um, do you know if you can mutter the do we know if we you can mutter the incantation like do you have to are you yell it yeah are you still sick is he still fixed upon him, or can he start talking or chanting again? Yeah, you can. You kind of tear your eyes away from him for a moment. Can you whisper the chant? Sure. You can just press the play button. But then it's loud. I mean, it needs a target, of course. Can yeah, maybe you can voice. whisper the chant. Just, well, just I mean, speaking for myself here, since I'm the guy saying the chant, unless you are too, um, Hale... I mean, I'm looking straight idea. at these guys, and I'm I'm chanting loud, blah 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 blah. You know, like I'm getting after it. I'm not fucking around. Right now. Right now. Okay. Um. Maybe. Yeah. I guess Carl's not gonna show up. Maybe we can. Maybe we should grab this Lostalis. We'll find out if either of these guys are part of the. You know. They obviously are, and they're obviously wizards, but we're not going to be able to get our prime target if we do this, because he's never going to come back here. Nobody's ever going to come back here for this. This place is going to be all over the media. 50 people killed in sudden ambush by mobsters. Sparky and Hale, give me another spot hidden, please. All right. 
Put I mean, green, it's pretty bro. much Dunzo in New York. I didn't make it. Alright. Boom. Yeah. Um. Both of you guys give me a stealth check. By the way, hide, conceal. Hide and conceal have been combined into stealth now. As well as uh, sneak. Okay, I didn't make my stealth check either. Okay. Is there a way I can... No, I don't want to push it. No, no. Um, so you're not chanting presently, right? Not yet? Who, me? Is that what I heard? Yeah. No, I'm chanting right now. You're chanting. Okay. Yeah. Like for real, not the tape recorder? Not, not, not the, I mean, the tape recorder's on, but I'm going with it too. How loud is it in here? Would it be noticeable? Like, is it noticeable yeah. from this side? No, he can do it under his breath. Excellent. Um, what is your target, Sparky? Who is your target? Uh, Lestalis Black. Okay. I mean, and Alex, uh, well, not Alex, but Hale, you know, if I'm chanting, man. Well, if you're doing under your breath, though, and it's not audible. If you do it under your breath right. and it's not audible, we can kill these people by whispering yeah. at them. All right, well, well, we'll see how that goes as long as I and feel like it's if that like doesn't work, then we blow the place up. All right. And can't you also then you cancel the on Brian Slim, Ambassador? Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll try that, too. Whisper. I see I see Sparky, and he's whispering, so I turn to... I will also begin whispering. Uh, at at, at the, Brian Slim. At Brian Slim. Very good. Okay. All right, yeah, so these two guys get up from their seats in the crowd, and they get up onto the stage. Um, as Black says, these are our time travelers, and everybody's clapping and stuff, and this is when you start the chant. These two men get up on the stage, and they kneel before Lostalis Black, who's standing just behind the podium, and Black turns to them and puts a hand on each of their heads, his left hand on one and his right hand on the other. Then he takes his hands off, their heads and he kind of turns his head sideways and looks out into the crowd and his eyes lock with yours sparky what, and he, so looks, what, and he, he looks, looks at brian and he looks at brian's slim briefly and then he puts his hands back on these two guys heads it's about now that you notice these two guys in fezes working their way through the crowd towards you uh -oh. All right. So How these guys be... has he completed the incantation? Yes. He completed. Nothing happened. Okay, so they're they're not dusty folks. So um, I'm gonna start uh, walking backwards out through the meeting hall. Then. Okay. Okay. As you do, as you do that. Lestalis Black begins this other chant. It's different from the first one. And as you exit the door, you kind of look over your shoulder back at the stage just for a moment. And you see these two men kneeling before Lestalis Black suddenly implode into themselves with a sharp snap as if they just disappear. And Black steps up back behind the podium. At that point, you're outside the front door, Sparky. Yep. Are, are you leaving too, Hale, or are you still in there? Um, I'm going to scoot towards the front door a little bit while All everyone's right. kind of standing and watching and all. All right, there are these two dark-skinned men and fezes kind of coming, walking towards you briskly at this point, Hale. All right. Um, as, you get, as you get to the door. No, I'm not. Like, okay, I was going to go try and intercept uh sparky's chasers well they're they're coming at both of you when spark sparky just kind of turns and he walks out the front door all right with a brief um, glance behind them i'm gonna step all the way as far back into the uh meeting hall as possible like into the corner and once they get within uh once they get like within 20 feet of me 
I'm pulling out the shotgun and I'm gonna start okay. shooting. All right, just as this crosses your mind, you hear the voice of Lestalis Black. Uh, and as you hear his voice, there's this gust of wind from somewhere inside the meeting hall, like a pretty strong gust of wind that kind of blows your, your, your clothing, kind of flaps in this wind. And you hear his voice filling the silence in here. It says, he says, I declare that the glories of look to the future have barely begun. And then you see two men reappear on the stage that weren't there before. The same two men that, you know, they brought back up on the stage. Yeah. yeah. And this is when you pull out your shotgun. These two guys are about 20 feet away from you. I'm like outside of the front door. I'm there with my my trench weapon out. Okay. If I see that gun come out of Kyle, I say, move the truck, back it up. Yeah, Hale, you're standing near the doorway, so the doctor... No, 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 no. Remember, I said I backed into the corner. You're backing into the corner. Okay. Yeah, you're, you don't see any guns then. You do see uh, the doctor, you do see Sparky pull out his fucking club. Um, so are you firing at these guys, Hale? Uh... I mean, there's other men like everywhere, you know, around you. There's a hundred guys in here, but these guys are kind of coming through the crowd. They're coming at you right now as you pull out your shotgun. Yep. Are you firing? Yep. Okay. And I'm backing the truck up, baby. I kick the kick the shins. Let's go. Yeah, at this range with the double barrel, you'll be able to get both of them. Um, so one or two shots. Two. All right. Roll your uh, firearm, rifle, shotgun skill. Here we go. Uh, boom. Oh my god. Push it, baby, push it. Can I... I don't think you can push those, but no. you can lock them. Um... Yeah. You're, 20, you're 21 points over. I... That's a lot of luck. Going... To, how, how do you get luck back? Time. When you do skill checks. When you succeed on skill checks? We're gonna, when you do skill checks to improve skills, which is what we're going to do, the last thing we're going to do tonight, at the end of the session. You'll get a 1d10. Uh, yeah, just like a skill. Ooh, Make up your lot. mind. One of them dodges. No, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do. I'll, I'll let that happen because it's only a signal anyway. Right. I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna shoot that, and I'm gonna pull out my sword. All right. So I hear the signal. Right, yep. So you the missed. shotgun. So you missed, right? I missed. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. This guy. All right. Hold on, Sparky. Before we go into initiative here, this guy pulls out a knife from his belt, and uh, he's on top of you, Hale. Okay. Give me a, dodge. give me a fighting brawl. Yeah, oh, you can either okay. you can either fight back, you can dodge. Oh, can or I can... parry? I have a sword. Well, that's fighting back. Okay. He rolled terribly, so. <laughs> God, Yog Soth off, bless him. Alex, you, you can fight back. Do you can dodge. Gray or well, green? You, listen to me for a second. You can fight back. You can dodge, or you can flee. What does fleeing do? It means you run away. Literally, I can get out of here? Yes. Oh, he, he yeah. He missed with the knife, so. Yeah. And if, you, if you fight back and, and or you succeed, you'll do damage to him with your sword cane, basically. Oh, that's good. So fight, let, dodge, or flee. Let, let the uh, AK-47 here do its job. Yes. Deal. Remember, Tom, concentrate Please. on the... Don't remember, Tom, the crowd is innocent, Tom. Oh, no, I know, I know. I'm going for the main guys. I know. Flee. But I gotta get the truck backed up. I'm going to flee, and I'm gonna go running out of the, the building, uh, pointing at the door. All right. Limit civilian so, casualties if possible. So, so, Sparky, you hear Hale's shotgun go off just inside the door, and then he comes running out. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll stand my ground waiting for somebody to come out who looks like they are in a attack position and smite them on the head mightily. Yeah, there's a guy with a knife chasing him. Oh, he comes, dead. He comes I, running I, out chasing Hale. 
I smashed remember the those, brains out. Remember those guys are coming up from behind too. We got the guards outside. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know that, man. I would just know that somebody's coming out chasing this guy with a knife. I'm gonna smash him. Right. Well, no, uh, actually, actually, I think you would have known that. Kyle, okay. Because he he saw them earlier after you guys arrived, and he would have pointed that out to you guys. And Dad, <clears throat> when I run out, I'm running out and clearing the door to the left. Like I'm. Okay. I'm, all right, Sparky, you got the guy right there. He comes running out the door. He's got a knife in his hand. He doesn't even see you. So go ahead and give me a fight brawl. Does he get any you, bonus you just, you dice just, for You can being, just flick your weapon. Does he get any bonus dice for being unseen? No, he's just not going to be able to dodge. That's a hit. That's two damage. Yep. All right, whack. That got his attention. No, he's, he's turned. He kind of trips. Falls to one knee, gets back up, and he sees you. Um, now we'll go into initiative here. So, Sparky. Um, glad you noticed me. How about another one? <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, he'll he'll fight back. <laughs> oh, you failed. Right, let's see if he can do something with his knife. Oh, misses. All right. Um, Prince. Is getting a little antsy. Is Prince going to do anything? No. Well, we Jacob. are watching. We, we're looking at, okay, between the, the meeting hall and the annex, are those guards moving? Can't see them at the moment. I'm just going to take them off of here. They're not in line of sight. They moved up or um, back? Well, it's dark, dude. It's very dark. Oh, Give me a spot yeah. hidden, Jacob. Uh, can, I throw can, up a, can I throw up a flare from the flare gun we have? Sure. Well, give me a spot hidden, and if you if you make it, you may be able to see one of them back there. If they are back there, the doc's we have on the flare. Might as well give you a spot hidden. We do have a flare gun. Chance here. No, nope, you don't see those guys back there. It's pretty fucking dark, man. So what's uh, Jacob doing? You see what I just described at the front of the meeting hall. Dale comes running out. He's got a shotgun in one hand and a sword cane in the other, with a guy with a knife chasing him. And it looks like Sparky's trying to brain him with his club. Apparently things went awry somehow, or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing went awry. This is exactly according to plan. Yeah, the spell didn't work. That's all. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the corner of the building. If these guards come around, Sean, I've got. Okay. Yeah. Here's a new ready. thing. Here's a new thing too. I'll implement. We can do it now, or you know, eventually, just kind of keep in mind. You can save your turn, kind of like a. You know, during initiative, you can say, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass," and you can use your turn later on in the round if, if something happens. So you, so okay. you're saying, if you see these guys, I'm gonna shoot at them. So if they do appear, you'll yeah, be able I'm to shoot at them. I'm scanning the area and reading for anybody coming up on my friends. You know. All right. Before hail, another guy comes out of the front door, and he's got a pistol in his hand. Um, he's gonna try to get a shot off here. At the guy attacking his uh, compatriot, Sparky. Ooh. All right. Mm. Dodge. He can't. He already took his action this turn. Yeah, I already went. I used my action. Oh! To shoot him. Oh, thank God. All right, so another guy with a fez comes out with a pistol, and he turns to Sparky and just point blank shoots you with it. Luckily for you, it's just a glancing blow. You take one damage. And now we're to uh, to hail. Yes. Um... Next okay. is Dot, and then we're back to Sparky again. Actually, it's the guy with the knife after a Doc. All right, uh, dropping the, dropping the double barrel, I'm pulling out my pistol and shooting the other guy with the pistol, uh, point okay. blank. All right, go ahead. The guy that just came out with the gun, right? Uh, actually, no, I'm going to actually just use my sword cane. I have a better chance of hitting with that. Okay. Have that fez word bastard. Um, since you're a point blank, since you're a point, right. Alex, since you're a point blank, you normally you get a bonus dice for that. So, you know, 
So at plus one is a hard success. So you hit him. Three damage? Yes, three damage. Okay. Now they're glancing blow. Just a flesh wound. All right, the guy with the knife lunges at Hale. He says something in some foreign language that you don't recognize, surprisingly. Oh! oh. Trips, falls, and breaks his head on the pavement. Nice. No, I know. As, as my truck backs into him, he can, like, get his head <laughs> crushed by the bumper. Him. Yeah. He falls right into the truck. All right, yeah, he lunges at you, Hale, and you kind of back up, back away, and he and he kind of loses his footing and falls. We're back to Sparky. All right, it's, smash it's, his wait, Doc didn't go at all. His oh, melon is his melon oh, is before you on the street, dude. He falls right in front of Sparky. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's Doc. <laughs> it's Doc's turn. Van Helsing. So, Doc gets that truck back right up on the door. Oh, right on top look of the at that, baby! Quest back. All right, so Van Helsing's like. Bugsy, go! All right, Bugsy starts up the truck, and Sparky brains the cultist right in the head for eight damage. Oh, brains and blood everywhere! Yes. Wait, 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 wait! The truck, though. Well, this would have been started the moment that we got no. out, dude. No, he had to start the truck, put it in gear. Come on! All right, so that was Sparky. We're back to Jacob. Jacob, you don't. There's no sign of any guards out there in the vacant lot that were there so, earlier at the moment. So that killed that one cultist. Oh yeah, bone crushing blow to the head, and he goes down like a ton of bricks. Awesome. You see, you see the dust come up from the ground as he just boom like a sack of potatoes on the ground. Uh, there seems to be a bit of a ruckus going on inside. You hear like, "What the hell's going on?" Uh, it looks like everybody's getting up out of their seats. You can hear some movement, you know, in there. Oh, get that truck in the way. The guy disappears and nobody says anything. A few gunfire. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, they were expecting the people to disappear. They weren't All expecting right, the brains on the Jacob, club. what are you doing? Are you doing anything? Are you going to stay put for now? Save my turn. Yeah, it looks like you saw Sparky just kill that guy. All right, uh, the guy with the gun. You know what? There's still a guy up. Yeah. There's two people out here. Um. Oh wait, did Sparky kill the guy with the gun or the guy with the knife? Sorry. The guy with the knife. That's what I thought. Okay. Whoever yeah. was closest to me. Right. So the guy with the gun. Oh wait, then it would have been the guy with the gun because the guy with the knife lunged at me. Trip. Right. Right. The guy with the knife is on the ground. Um. He gets. He gets. He kind of turns towards you, Hale, and he tries to grapple you. Uh, okay. He's fighting you. You gonna fight back? Dodge or flee? Yes, I'm going to fight back. Alright. So what this means, guys, and this might take some getting used to, even though he rolled a 74, which is higher than his fight skill, um, Hale will be able to, you know, do some damage back to him if he makes his. So roll fight brawl for Hale. I succeed. I deal eight okay. damage. So what you can do, you can do damage to him, or you can do what's called a maneuver, which is something else, uh, like the different options for grapple. Like you can get him in a headlock, you can pin him, uh, you can throw him. You know, you can do um, something that wouldn't normally do damage to him. You know what I'm saying? I'm get him going in a to wheel. push. Sure, I'm under the wheels of the truck. Yeah, I'm gonna push <laughs> him uh, into the meeting hall. No, wait. Can I get? A, can I push him onto the ground in front of the doors? Yeah. Okay, good. Right, so he gets up. He's kind of grabbing at your legs, and he stands up. Um, he's grabbing at you. Uh, so you just kind of grab him by the shoulder and fling him back down on the ground. You basically push him down on, onto the ground. Beautiful. All right, now we're back to Doc. All right, Bugsy's got he's got the the truck started here. Um, oh, come on. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> uh, All right, Hale, I, I tilted you, too. <laughs> Um, and you guys see this truck coming, you have to kind of jump out of the way. And bam, the truck kind of crashes into the doorway here. 
So it's and perfectly 100% straight, right? Just like pretty, you said pretty it Pretty much. Be. Pretty much, yeah. Come on, we're doing this gangster style, okay? So it's and, I'm, and I'm unloading, dude. I'm laughing, going, woo! And I'm All right, so, up at that, uh, yeah, up did, the, he uh, kill, did he kill the guy on the ground? Does the truck... Yeah, do doom do doom Excellent. And I'm shooting up on stage, man. I'm unloading. <laughs> All right, Doc. So you, so you kind of lay, lean forward. Oh, wow. You throw back the canvas tarp, you know, covering the back of the uh, truck, and sit back <laughs> down on this crate of ammo you got, and you sit down on the crate of ammo and just pull the trigger, right? And I say, watch this crude interruption. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jacob, from your vantage point, you can see, man, this truck that you see the machine gun, it just lights up the night, man. And you hear it. You know, uh, go ahead and roll that for that, Tom. It's a machine gun. You, know, you have a base of 15%, but. He's got do I have... we, we mapped yeah. it out. It's a 98. Yeah, firing 20 rounds, you get plus 5% per round. So, so do I have a macro for that? I just roll the normal dice yeah, on the bottom? Roll... Yeah, you can just roll a normal dice for it. Nice. 82. How many no, of these do I roll? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, 28. Oh, yeah, 28. Woo! Yeah, just one. You just, kind of, you're just kind of firing indiscriminately at the stage, right? You, yeah. can, see a, you can see a few what? guys standing up there on the stage. Los Dallas Black I'm, is one of them. Yes, yeah, good! Yeah, I'm firing at, I'm firing at Brian, Black. Brian, Brian Slim and anybody else on the stage, dude. Just execute the stage. Yep. And some right. spray, spray the, the crowd, man. Right, so you've got at least two targets up there in the stage. There you go. So you rolled 28 and a 40. Now roll. Yep. We're, we're going to do 10 bullets at black and, and 10 bullets at, or I'm sorry, 10 bursts at black and 10 bursts at slim. So roll a D10 for black to see how many bullets come find their come mark. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, baby. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yes, beautiful. Nine. Now roll another D10 to see how many bullets find... Uh, slim. Come on. Big 10. Big 10, baby. Damn, dude. You That's fucking are awesome. awesome, dude. All right. And here's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to factor in a couple of bursts, like, in the space between them. All right. So you're going to roll for black. It's going to be 7D10 plus 14. Oh, yeah. We're going to kill the time travelers, too, I guess. Yeah, 7D10. Times what? Or a modifier plus, of what? Plus 14. That looks like a lot. All right, cool. You got the modifier in there. It's 49 yep. damage to black. Now roll 5d10 plus 10 for slim. 5d10 plus how many? 10? 10. 10. Yeah. Suck it, Black. How much was that? 32? No way he survived that. There's just no way. That's the big nasty, baby. That's 30 caliber fucking eraser death. Right. <laughs> that's that's legs and, legs oh, and body parts oh, are shoot. off everywhere. It's 49 on Black and 32 on Slim. So like I said, Tom, man, this machine gun just lights there. things up, man. This this play it's like a fucking strobe light going off in here. People are running everywhere. There's bullets flying. There's fucking, you know, candles and shit exploding up on the stage. <laughs> um, and you see both of the guys on the stage, they look like they try to jump yeah. out of the way. But you, you just pepper them, man, with the fucking machine gun. And it's still going to you've still it's got another a challenge for me. You still got another nineteen hundred rounds plus, you know. So you're just awesome. going to town on these guys and they're down they get down on the ground and you can see that you hit them several times each okay are they still moving or have they turned into they, ground they, beef? yeah no they don't look like they're moving hey what okay. are you doing? you're standing out here by the truck um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna try and get my best vantage as the, if i can get anywhere under the truck anything to get um even a sliver of view of Los Dallas Black. All right, you kind of peer in there and you have to look over some heads and stuff, but it looks like there's 
two or three guys lying down on the stage up there. They look like they've been hit. They're I'm gonna look for the biggest one. It looks like one. they're kind of they're squirming around up there on the stage on the I'm floor. I'm gonna look for the biggest one, and I'm gonna go ahead and start chanting. That, okay. that would be Lestal's black. I'm looking for Lestal's black and chanting. Resurrection? Is that what you yes, mean? Yes, reverse resurrection. All right, we're back to Sparky. Okay, so set the scene for me. What am I seeing right now? All right, so the truck has just basically crashed into the doorway right next to you. You had to kind of move out of the way. The truck is there. Boom! And you and you hear the doctor say something about a crude interruption, and, you, and the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> the machine gun just lights things up, man. It's piercing to your ears. You're fucking deaf right now. And it's just going to town, man. He's just spraying bullets into the meeting hall. You're standing next to the truck. The truck is backed into the wall next to you. Okay. I'm trying to get to the back. Okay, so I... I, uh, I You're screaming. I, 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 oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm running. I'm running into the. I'm running into the fray underneath the, the thirty cal, and um, I'm trying to head to the front. How to far back, can I get? Like the stage. All right, yeah, you can kind of slink along this wall back over here, right, and stay out of the 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 uh, fire. Yep, that's what I'm doing now. Now I have my pistol out. And my trench weapon out, so it's it's old times for baby, you know, like I'm All ready right. to fucking rock. All right, you see, there's men, they're screaming, and everybody's like hitting the floor, man. They're all crawling under these benches and shit, trying to avoid uh, this hail of bullets coming. You see three guys lying on the stage, kind of squirming on the floor up there. They're bleeding. They look like they've been hit. One of them, Lostalis Black, the other, Brian Slim, and the other, uh, you're not sure, some guy in a suit. Get him! Oops. I try to Chance look that for man. Uh, last, last what, what, what? Well, does right, it look like that. Carl? No. Okay. Never mind. Then. Mm. I think it's probably one of the time travelers. I'm gonna get. Uh, I'm gonna move. I'm. I'm gonna look as I'm moving forward. I'm gonna get close to these guys with my trench weapon because that's the best. But I'm looking around, spot hidden, just to see what I can see. All right, give me a spot hidden. Yeah, dude, we might need you to collect some of that essence once he turns to dust. I don't make it. I, I can tell you this, Sparky. Brian Slim, at least, y you can see his face uh, sort of in the remaining candlelight in this place. He, he looks like he's dead. It looks like he's hit in the head a couple of times, and there's just this pool of blood underneath his body, and he, he's not moving. Well, Stylus Black, he's kind of squirming and moving around up there. Looks like he's still alive, but he's been shot several times. Okay. You still going to move up towards the stage? I'm moving towards him, yeah, specifically. Okay. All right, you get about halfway up here. All right, Prince and Jacob in this truck down here. What are you guys doing? Anything? Give me, give me another spot hidden for Jacob. I'm, I'm scanning intently. Yeah, let's see if you can pick anything out up there. Hmm. What about still Prince? No, he can yeah, spot still, it. Still no sign. No, he, he's more of a listen role, Prince is. He can listen. The only thing, only thing you, can, you can hear right now are 30 caliber machine gun rounds. Well, what about smell? Hey. Is smell spotted? Yeah, smell. I was just going to say that too, smell. No. I mean, he's I'm a good sure boy. He's, he's, he's sitting right next to you, Jacob. And he's, his ears are up. You know, and he's looking just at what's going on, just like you are. You're just gonna he's staying, for now? He's staying with me for the moment. Yeah, man, we're saving our turn. All right. Back to you, Doc. You keeping that finger on the trigger? Absolutely. Unloading, concentrated on black. If he's still moving, I'm shooting. <clears throat> All right. Roll. And the rest of you guys, fly, uh, watch my flank on the left. Make sure these guys don't come up from next to me. Yeah, just give me one roll this time for machine gun. For the D D D100? Yep. No modifier? Nope. 29. All right. Why don't you go, go ahead and check machine gun if you haven't already. 
All right, dude. So you're just you're just spraying, dude. And this thing's mounted to the truck, so it's pretty stable. But still, you don't have much experience with the machine gun, so some of these shots are kind of you know getting off. The thing's fucking bucking like a bronco in your fucking hand. Um, slight problem: the barrel, uh, the fire coming out of the barrel has set a small fire onto the canvas on the back of the truck right now. That's just a small fire. Um, but there's just bullets fucking flying in there. You hit Lostalis Black a few more times, and there's just a couple other guys you hit accident accidentally. Okay. Do they happen to be befezzed? It's hard to say. It's kind of it's it's kind of chaotic and dark in here right now. Hale, what are you doing? Hey, remember, oh, remember, guys, you got chance. your elephant gun. You got your elephant guns and stuff in the back of my truck here, too, if you need them. This is the second round, chant. Yep. On the Stalas. Yeah, well, it's been one whole round, actually. Good. Continuing that, focused dead on the Stalas Black. Sparky. You get up to the stage, and there's this short flight of steps, like four or five steps that go up to the stage. You look over, and uh, you can see these bullets. You can uh, you can hear the fucking bullets whizzing by. You're kind of keeping low to the ground. You got your club in your hand. You look over at Lostalis Black, um, and his eyes meet yours. Um, and <laughs> it's almost horrifying when you see that there's a smile on his face. And he turns, and he kind of gets on all fours. And you can see blood like pouring out of these wounds on him. And he kind of struggles a little bit and then he falls again. Shoot him. He looks hurt very badly, but he's smiling. Or better yet, just chant. So almost involuntarily under your breath, you can't help it. Like, what the but Jesus? What's going on? This guy. He looks happy. What are you doing, Sparky? Sparky? Uh, did Kyle disconnect? Can, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. there we go. Um, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm I, I putting you on guys on mute for a sec. Okay. Um, I am chanting and I'm shooting. Well, one or the other. Oh, well, then I'm, I'll, I'll let you then do I'm, both. Then I'm, then, oh, okay. I'll let you do both. That's no big deal. All right, go ahead and uh, shoot him. What do you got? I got my 1911. Okay. I don't know what the damage is for that, but... It's a uh, D10 plus two. Just to use your firearm handgun skill. And here's the thing. You can fire one shot with just a normal chance of success. You can fire up to three chances, but you need, um, I believe, hard successes with them. I'm just going to fire I, once. Yeah, actually, I think you need a hard success with the first and then uh, extreme success with the other two. So I'm just pulling off some rounds works. Look at that. Boom. Well, I didn't, and that's plus two because I couldn't add the plus two to it, so it's twelve points of damage. Bang. Okay. Plus the uh, chant. You should be able to put the damage in on your character sheet for that weapon. I may have put it in wrong. It wouldn't let me for some reason. But... All right. Boom. Headshot. Boom. His head splatters like a fucking melon, and he goes still on the stage. Shoot him right in the head. He looks dead. Is he still smiling? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big bloody smile. We're back to you, Jacob. You see Sparky go running back into the meeting hall. All right, man. I guess I will. Uh... Prince. I'd keep an eye I'm out. Basically, for those I'm basically, yeah, I'm basically covering Tom's left side here. Okay. I'm basically kind of, you know, street. I'm trying to find cover, but I'm I'm trying to cover the uh, from the annex to the meeting hall that side, so no one comes up on Tom. Yeah, I mean, not even 20 seconds has passed since the truck, you know, pulled up to the front door. Uh, you don't see you anybody can't get out through the there. Front to have... door. Oh, you the could, door. yeah, yeah, you could squeeze through there and get inside if you wanted to. Yeah. Really, I do. All right, so you're running up to the. Uh, Meeting hall. That's okay. well, what, uh, that's me. Prince coming with you. All right, you can get about halfway there. Hey, you 
you know. I'm like, I, I, I yell up at the doctor. I'm like, let's go in here, man. It just occurred to me that they might be able to trace these machine guns back to me. <laughs> Now's not the time. Dude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Hale, for some, some random box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh jeez! All right, we're back to you, Doc. Are you I may your finger or may not trigger? never be allowed to step foot in America again. Uh, <laughs> so there's there's like a hundred people in here, man. They're all screaming bloody murder, or they're all trying to hide behind these benches. Um, Doc, you see Sparky up there, up near the stage, um, and you see he's got his gun out and he's shooting. Everybody on the stage except for him seems to be dead. You killed a few other guys up there near the stage too. Nice what are we doing here, guys? Let's, let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, we should pack up and go. So, right. I keep okay, so shooting. We're not, we're not, we're not going to run down. down as as the smallest black is not dead. All right. Gonna, so, okay, so we're we're retreating. We're not going to go down into the basement. Is that what? I don't think we should go down into the basement. No. Well, hold, hold on one second. Of... Something happens. We still need to get him into dust, which I'm very, very close to doing. So all of you hear Dr. Van Helsing scream, Let's get the hell out of here! As he briefly stops his automatic fire from the machine gun. There's like smoke coming out of the barrel now, Tom. And part, okay. of, part of your truck's on fire now from the fucking, you know, the fire coming out of the end of your machine gun. Set your fucking truck on fire. Get the truck up across the street, man, and jump out, right? Come into the Sparky, in, inside the meeting hall, you feel this sudden gust of wind come from somewhere in there, and all the candles go out. And you stay, you're standing almost in pitch darkness. You begin hearing this uh, sort of crunching, wet sound coming from nearby in the direction of the bodies lying on the stage and then you begin hearing this voice it's this very low uh with this very low timber and it sounds like a uh, a pulsing chant almost coming from somewhere and you hear this like it sounds like bones cracking or some shit what are you doing sparky what can I see around me? Anything? Not much. No, nope, all the light just went out in here. All right, well, I'm going to I knew where I came from, so I'm going to start to retreat. Well, it's dark. You start kind of tripping over people lying on the floor, tripping over, you trip over a bench onto the floor, and you hear this uh this sort of swelling voice like a it sounds like a Can I see the like a low note? Can I, can I make my way to the voice and smash it with my trench club? It does occur to you that you have a flashlight in your pocket. Oh, well, I pull my flashlight out and start looking around. Shine that on black so I can see. So All I can right. shoot him. Oh, and so, I yell to the driver to put this damn fire out. <laughs> Bugsy's like, what the? Okay, he gets out. Bugsy steps out of the truck. He's right by, by the, about that time, Jacob, you're arriving up to the truck. You can see the truck's on fire. Sparky, you take out your flashlight and you kind of fumble with it a little bit and you turn it on and you shine it up on the stage. You see the body of Lestalis Black has turned into this dark gooey mass and thousands of pink looking pulsing worms are coming out of its torso. Oh, I know what this is. And the sort of green liquid begins coming out of every orifice in the in this in its in his body and pooling on the stage all right man i'm running and as then, fast as i and can then, okay shit. just before you turn to run you see come up out of his stomach what looks like a gigantic very large like pinkish red tongue come up out of its belly and you turn and you run like, give me a sanity check Oh, dude. (laughs) 
the building begins to shake. If only we brought our camera. Oh, I didn't make it. Okay, just hold that thought. The building and the ground begins to shake for all of you. It's, almost, it's like an earthquake. And you're all kind of like, whoa. And, and you can see the walls of the meeting hall begin to split and crack and crumble. Oh. Sparky, what are you doing? I'm running like hell, man. Wait, wasn't okay. it? Okay. You're kind of, you're, the light of your flashlight's just kind of like wild as you're running. It's just kind of wild. It's the only light in here. And you can see all these guys, they're lying on the floor, still hiding. Uh, you see the fire outside. It looks like the truck is partially on fire, the canvas. That's, covering that's the your light. That's what you run, run for the right. fire. Right. You're run running towards the light. the light. Running the light. So you get up to about the door here. Uh, Prince begins barking madly, Jacob. What do you, what's Jacob doing? Excuse we we man. we go to the we go to the escape car the one on this side and pick as many people up as we can we need to get out of here okay go ahead and move i mean you can move about halfway there or so prince is with you what's dr van helsing doing i'm shooting that black pink mass up on the up on the uh, stage. <laughs> well, yeah, you you did you actually haven't seen it, Tom. You didn't. You, Sparky just kind of glimpsed it and turned and ran. When he saw I'm it. still shooting at the stage. I'm shooting on the stage. Right. Everything up there. I'm unloading. Shooting, shooting into the darkness. Lee, you yep, have to, Lee, you have to click the arrow on your menu at the top left there to select. You're on the ruler, so make. Just click the arrow and you should be able to select your token again. So Dr. Van Helsing is just firing madly into the darkness. Uh, near the stage, I mean, where I was firing before. I mean, the gunfire itself kind of lights it up enough so you can kind of get your bearing. Um, so Van Helsing, you see on the stage this black mass with pinkish, reddish looking worms or something coming up out of it. And this huge, bloody best can be described as a tongue coming out of Lostalis Black's body and flailing about above him almost to the ceiling of this place at this point. And, yeah, you're, I'm shooting. and, and you're just peppering this thing with bullets. I need a sanity check from you too. God. You skipped me last round. I know. You were chanting. Did it you're not next, work? Because it was supposed next, to though. end last round. No, it didn't work. Crap. All right, Santa, the green one, right? Yes. Ugh. All right, so both Sparky and the doctor have failed. Oh, shit. All right, what's Hale doing? So I finished my chant last round and then didn't work didn't seem to have any effect right now the ground is shaking and the bill building is kind of shaking apart just to give you an idea this is like steel reinforced concrete that this building is made of the the earthquake that's happening right now is so severe that it's actually tearing this building apart the ground is shaking beneath your feet you can see All the right. truck you can see the wheels of the truck coming off the ground Okay, uh, in this in this incredibly loud moment, I'm going to turn to uh, I'm going to turn to Doctor I'm going to turn to the Doc and I'm going to say, uh, put the machine gun in the car when you're done. And I uh, go around the and I go around the vehicle and I'm pointing vehemently uh, at the other truck, yelling towards Jacob. Although I'm sure he can't see me, so it's just like pantomiming. Grab the machine gun. Okay. And I'm running towards the, the truck to get the machine gun. All right. Don't let him trace it back to me. <laughs> yeah. Be, be, between the machine gun fire and the earthquake that's happening right now, it's hard to hear anything. Your ears are just ringing. Um, Sparky, you're able to get out of the door next to the truck here. And you still, you, all of you now begin hearing this sort of low uh, rumbling 
roar. It's, like, it's almost like a steady low E note, you know, and it's so loud that it just fills your senses. You see, um, well, there's this, there's this crack, this, this gigantic cracking sound um, as the ceiling of the meeting hall collapses and rising into the night. You uh -oh. see this horrible multi-limbed monstrosity. It's this gigantic clawed monster with clawed appendages in a single long blood red tentacle in place of its face. And it's about 30 stories tall, rising above into the night before you. I need everybody to make a sanity check. What have we gotten ourselves into? Yeah, it's time the for usual. dynamite, boy. The usual. It's time for that dynamite. Is not we gotta, good. We gotta get out of here. <laughs> All Somebody right, go. I failed. You extremely succeeded. Wow. <laughs> Woo! Doctor, Doctor well, Andy. you know that's everyday stuff. What is this crude interruption? What is this crude interruption? I've totally regained my senses. Okay. Woo! Where's the uh, where's the area? Uh, it's right next to the big Call of Cthulhu. Yeah. Oh my God, Jacob failed the sanity check. What? Really? Second time in the whole game. Wait, yeah, what, what kind of world are we living in? That's one for the history books. <laughs> I, I hate to say this, Lee, but that's the one you didn't want to fail. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, let's so, do, let's do Tom. What about Prince? Yes. Let's do Tom and Kyle first because they made their sanity check, although they failed their previous two. So, Tom, for the doctor, I need you to roll 1d10 and a d6 as well i mean i guess it's just a logical progression oh guy turns into tentacle monster tentacle six. monster's gonna break out of the hall i hope that's not six sandy i just lost and a d6 two so it's eight you lose eight uh, sanity same thing oh for sparky it's a d10 plus a d6 ouch eight. that hurt that's my percentile. That's three. Five. Sparky loses five. All right, now to the bad part, Alex. Uh, you failed your sanity check. Yep. You have witnessed the bloody tongue. I need you to roll a D100. Oh God, 62? You lose 62 sanity points. No, I oh, don't. Oh no. no, I don't. Oh my God, really? I'm at negative. You're at zero? Yeah, I'm well, wait, 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 hold on, zero. hold on. Tell me what happened again. So he missed his, it was a 62 point sanity loss. That's the biggest sanity loss we've ever had in the party ever. Jacob, you failed your sanity check, too. I need you to roll a D. I think we're seeing him. The one. The bad one. Oh, my God. Oh, God, Jacob, dude. Jacob loses 72 sanity points. So well, I, have, I have no sanity points. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm sure you can imagine the mind-shattering nature of this whole encounter. Um, and just to put into context, you guys are all seasoned game gamers, right? So let's just put it this way. You guys are right now facing, encountering the bloody tongue. It is an avatar of Nier Lothotep. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Nier Lothotep. the big in himself. Yes, Nier Lothotep is here, alive and well, in Manhattan. <laughs> all so, right. So we're dealing with more awesome. than dust zombies. We're dealing with the Elder Gods. Of course. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so uh, you know, all dynamite and and grenades getting thrown while the the babbling insane people 
Well, we got what happens to them. What are they, I mean? Yeah. Are you stuck? It's time to run, man. Here's what's going to happen, okay? We need to take care there's of this. No, there's no beat in this thing. Stuff. Um, so check this out. I made some insanity decks here. There's a little card deck on your screen. Nice. What we're going to do, I'm going to shuffle them. It's like a deck of many things. No. Right. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> we're we're going to deal one, a hail. Yeah, I on stage with neurologic. Okay, and then we're going to deal one to the doctor. And I, I don't know if it's even worth it, but we'll deal one to... to uh... Well, actually, everybody's going to get one, so... Dad, what are the slashes? What are the slash numbers? How do I change those? What are they? Insanity and the sanity box. What? Hang on. Um, Lee, why aren't you on my list? I'll just have to drag it over to your guy. I, right, so I, I, hate, to, I hate to say this. What about Bugsy and uh, Bruno? Yeah. Or whatever? They're, yeah. they're 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 there to get us out of here, so they are getaway guys. So hopefully right. they'll. they'll so not so now if you look at your avatars at the bottom of the screen there, each of you have a card attached to your uh, your character. And what these are, these are madness cards. So, for instance, to Sparky... Oops. I didn't want to do that. God damn it. You should be able to click on that card. If you click on the card, it'll show you what it is. Sparky got faint... Hale got compelled by belief. The doctor. No, I don't want to steal oh, the card. No, I don't want to steal it either. It no. says mistaken identity. Yeah. And Jacob also got faint. Freak the fuck out, man. Yeah. I can't ah. take it anymore. <laughs> Uh, oh. So flask, but I can't get to it quick enough. So, so unfortunately, Sparky and Jacob immediately faint away. It's just too much. They just can't take that much uh, near a the top. Um, Hale, it says, what has just happened? It hits you like a thunderbolt, and you have a sudden insight that massively confirms one of your held beliefs or ideologies. Um, and now, technically, when you do character creation, you should have some kind of ideology, but it just says the insight causes you to take your ideology or belief to an extreme crazed or demented level far beyond the norm. Immediately act upon this accordingly. Uh, yeah, kind of, the kind worms of the same are, thing that, these, these guys, these, go, these, uh, they're gods are but worms, Dad. I am, I, I'm following <laughs> the Necronomicon. Uh, truly, the, this thing before me is, is, is not supposed to be here it's it's a worm it's it's all that is evil and wrong with this world have my unconscious body my italian friend and get <laughs> yeah get the fuck out of here <laughs> well we'll see just be patient <laughs> so when i click on the card how do i make it go away now i've got this big black box that says all cards in hand do i click on uh, all just click on the tag? card again yeah, down uh, on the green card down there at the bottom. If you click on that again, it will close. Should close that black. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think I clicked on somebody's and I, I was like, uh, you so, and I'm so like, no, I'm so, not. So let's figure let's out, let's an ambassador. It seems like you come to you have some kind of demented or crazed attack. You know, having to do with the Necronomicon or this you thing know, what infuriates. You're infuriate you it is yes it is not it is not meant to be this thing you, is everything that is wrong with wizards and, does hail and start magic. cursing at near Lothotep? i guess if you don't if unless you interpret that as oh wait all right I'm supposed so, to be worshiping this i mean there's two ways to interpret compelled by belief 
So, so Tom, you're really the only one kind of standing there, except for maybe the two gangsters. We'll get to those guys in a second. You hear Hale beginning like, son of a mother! God, he starts cussing. Okay? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pointing angrily at the giant creature, screaming obscenities at it. Yeah, kind of fumbling with his elephant gun in his hands. Mistaken identity. I'm not sure if this one's appropriate, actually. Do I think my daughter's here? Yeah, it says suddenly you recognize a person important in your life is here. It doesn't matter how they are here. What's important is that they are here. Consider the nature of your relationship to this person and immediately act upon it. So I'm not sure if this one's appropriate, but we can probably figure out something with your daughter. Yeah, like... Uh, let me see here. I grab some guy thinking it's my daughter and I take him <laughs> in the car and like, let's go, we gotta get my daughter out of here! And I, some random dude. Sure. Yeah, you start screaming. Let's get out of here. My daughter's a guy. Yeah. Oh, dude, what if you think your daughter's in the building? Or no, what if I think my daughter's you? Oh yeah. There you go. I, I start grabbing you. Come with me, pumpkin. And I grab <laughs> you and throw you into the truck. All right. Let's see what these guys are doing here. We do pay them. That should motivate them to drag drag me and Sparky's ass out of there. All right. Let's see what Bobby gets. Whoa, that's big. Yes, that's what I wish anybody uh, would feel like upon seeing your loth attack. Just, oh, hey there, grumpy old man. How can I help you? <laughs> All right, so Bobby, who's the one driving the car that you're in, uh, Dr. Van Helsing, starts screaming, and he just he, he just slams on the gas to the truck. Um, but, and by the way, the earthquake has now finished. You kind of the truck just lurches forward, kind of sends you flying in the back of it. I um, mean, he's out on the street now in the truck, Boom! with you in it. Oh boy. Um, Bugsy in the truck that you're that you are running towards there, Jacob. Jacob, you're fainted on the street. Prince stands over you, barking madly. Um, you guys uh, get a look over there, uh, Doctor, as you kind of poke your head out the back of the truck as you're pulling out onto the street. You can see uh, uh, Bobby kind of slumped over the wheel of the truck uh, down the street there. Oh. And, uh, and the truck begins zooming down the street here at, at full speed. Wow. Oh, crap. So, how? I mean, how bad can Nirloth attempt be, really? I know. He's got like <laughs> 50, 60 rounds in him. Well, I described him to you, you know. You oh, I, mean, know. I mean, yeah, he's scary, but, you know, I mean... Uh, the bloody tongue. The bloody tongue. So Hale, you're you're kind of fumbling with your elephant gun. You're screaming at this thing, that that you know it's like thirty stories tall, dude. Well, you're looking up at this thing, and suddenly this thing lifts off of the ground, and disappears into the sky in this streak of light, and it's gone. And you just and you just keep screaming. Yeah, at this point, my curses have just subsided into just straight up. Ah! Ah! All right, Ooh, this truck is gone. It's down the street. I can't get him to stop. He won't listen to me. I mean, is he? I'm like, dude, stop. No, no he's not stopping. My daughter. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> My cocaine. Um, I mean, my daughter. <laughs> no, I have my cocaine with me. I'm okay there. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you're trying to get him to stop. Well, I can understand stopping for cocaine. Okay, that was the worst outcome that that could have been. That was the worst. I don't know, man. I mean, we did. No, 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 no
I actually shot Deer Lothotep in you the head. Two of you are passed out. Two of you are passed out in the middle of the street. I've driven. The only guy who's halfway sane can help you just drove away. I mean, this is yeah, bad. Yeah, we got two. We've got two right. cars on the street. We, we'll be all right. Just calm down. Good. We can all be. Yeah. So here's here's what's gonna happen. It's all gonna be fine. <laughs> Listen, there's a bunch of people running all over it. Nero Lothotep just took off. I think we're going to be fine. Uh-huh. Yep. That's everything that could possibly happen. It'll be Listen, okay. I think that it's uh, we just got to keep it positive. <laughs> so what, <laughs> it's what a else good can we do? omen that a giant, huge tentacle monster with a big old bloody dog. I'm not saying that that's good, but I'm just saying that, that, definitely, that definitely probably brought some attention to the... Only a little bit. All right. So here's what's here's what's happening to you. Widely reported. Here's what's happening to you, Hale. So you you are mad. Okay. You are absolutely insane right now. But here's what's basically happening. You're standing out in front of this place, and you're just kind of screaming these obscenities and shit. And people start coming out of the building. No, wait. I'm in the car though with the doctor. Just, just mm. drove off. No, you know, I don't he think grabbed he, you me and he, he grabbed me. He said I was his daughter and that we have to go. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's, That's fine. Because that's a <laughs> That's exactly how we were expecting this to happen. And I'm hugging him saying, Oh my daughter, I need to save you, you poor thing. <laughs> Are you feeling better? <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, well then here's what's happening to Sparky then. Sparky, and, and this is just going to assume that a little bit of time has passed here, and we'll get back to the others who kind of survived this ordeal. Where's the other driver, Sean? Um, he's also completely insane, Bobby. Okay, okay. Um, Sparky, you come to your senses, and you realize that there are restraints on your wrists. And you appear to be alone in some sort of room. There are no windows. The door has a small opening covered in stout iron bars. Let me out! You hear yourself shouting. And it sounds, it begins to sound to you like the raving of a madman. As you scream over and over again, let me out. I'm dying. Let me out. Slowly calmness descends and you fall quiet and you begin to recall the events that transpired and after a little while there's a sound of a door opening and someone saying are we feeling better now I don't what's know are we what has happened to Sparkly is apparently he has been institutionalized and the full story will come out, but probably what happened is Sparky woke up and maybe was helped by somebody or something, and he wound up in some kind of institution. Are we feeling better now? I think I think we are. Can I go home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we? <laughs> I feel much better now. <laughs> I you think know? I feel completely sane. If you were to ask me, <laughs> on, a scale, on of... a scale of one to ten for saneness, ten being insane, one being not insane, I am at a one. All right, at 11. Eight, for, for for Jacob. Okay. Suddenly, you come to your senses, and you look around, and surrounding you, you're, you're in a subway. It appears to be a subway probably the New York subway and surrounding you is a scene of devastation. People lie on the floor groaning. Some of them nursing their injuries while other are co others are covered in blood. Some not moving at all. And a stark realization grips you. Did I do this? You look down to your hands and see that they're covered in blood and you realize that it's not your blood. You don't remember a thing, least of all, why you instigated a spree of violence and destruction you stare at the fear on the people's faces as you hear the sound of sirens approaching oh Run. dude oh. 
Where's Where's Prince? Is Prince with him? No. So you turn and you run, and you find your way up out of the subway and into the street. And uh, so at this point, since Jacob and uh, the ambassador have zero sanity, um, that's going to be the end of them for now. Um, but what happens, I suppose, would be that you guys get back to the bungalow, hail Dr. Van Helsing. Hail and, does uh, never stop screaming. Yeah. And, uh, and Bobby... And Dr. Van Helsing, I mean, you realize pretty quickly, um, you're in a state of shock yourself, but you realize pretty quickly that the condition of Hale and what he's saying and stuff, he has completely lost his fucking marbles. Yeah, I'm just screaming at the top of my lungs. Every once in a while, I'll gurgle in an obscenity towards the, like, uh, you know, about about how their gods are worms, and then I'll just go back to screaming until my I, voice I knock is them just... out. I knock them out with a dose of morphine. I just shh, go to bed, go to sleep. Yeah, and until the end of this, I guess I'll just keep screaming until I have no vocal cords, just in furious anger. I dose them up and try to calm him down with the morphine as with my hand shaking all right um lee you again also... sitting with my daughter do i still think it's my daughter the bungalow well it's very confusing for you i suppose because your daughter was here somewhere maybe she's in the basement oh, <laughs> so no. you run down to the basement what's her name uh pumpkin pumpkin, pumpkin. pumpkin. you're like pumpkin pumpkin <laughs> You know, and and Hale, you're kind of like you you know you hear the doctor running around the bungalow like pumpkin, pumpkin, where are you? Um, Lee, Jacob also loses six hit points somehow, some way. Maybe maybe one of your victims fought back. Um, so yeah, Jacob is completely insane. The ambassador is completely insane. Um, so shit, you guys, we're gonna have to pick up the pieces here. Um, Sparky. I'm not minute. completely insane, You're but I'm... not completely I'm... insane, but you found yourself in an in a insane asylum somewhere. Probably here in New York. And we can work so that out. out. Maybe I can get you out, Sparky. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how much well, I'm are you being a, I'm, being, I'm being a good little boy. Yeah, do you think there's like a take one, leave okay. one policy for insane people? Oh, I guess I might as well read <laughs> the Necronomicon. Like switch, switch them out? Yeah. Necronomicon now, right? Yeah, might as well, right? Too bad I was the only person to know Greek. <laughs> so, actually, this, uh... Mm, time right. to roll some backup characters. <laughs> yeah, I think it might be the case. Yeah, for for uh, for you and Hale, definitely. Uh, oh, how many man, that did sucks. You take, Kyle? What's I that? Can't, I can't click on your sheet. Firefox is fucking out. How many? How much sanity did you take? What's your current sanity for Sparky? My cur Sparky is at yeah. forty-two, I believe. Yeah. Can yeah, you tell me what those 42. slashes are? Yeah, and you got faint and institutionalized. What slashes? Like, it says, for me, it says 0 slash 60 slash 94. All right. Uh, the last number is your maximum sanity. Uh, it's 100 minus your Cthulhu Mythos skill. Okay, and then, okay, so first is current, second is, mm, like, your stable so sanity, and then... It's 99 minus your Cthulhu okay. Mythos. So the higher your Cthulhu Mythos, the lower your maximum sanity. Okay. You can always, you know, through institutionalization and therapy and stuff like that, you can gain sanity points above your starting, but never above your maximum. Dang, man, um, that really sucks. Can I make my way back to the bungalow, at least, Sean? I've well, realized my craziness and I escaped from them. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to have to think about that because... Do I just get picked more, up and institutionalized? Yeah. Well, more likely than not, 
um, after what just occurred. Apparently, you just went on some killing spree in a subway. More likely than not, you're going to be picked up by the cops. You know, it's probably what's going to happen to Jacob. Um, I mean, we're getting to the end of the session here, so I might have to think about that. I mean, really, there's, there's, <laughs> I mean, from a practical standpoint, there's, there's no reason I think that Jacob would even want to go back to the bungalow, even if that occurred, even if a thought occurred to him. You're still, I mean, Jacob's still having trouble remembering what even just happened. Right. You know, he's totally insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's totally yeah, insane. He just, and Hale too. Um, you just, I, I kind of see the ambassadors just trying to come to grips with, uh, the bloody tongue and, and what the that, institutions yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, the uh, way that he described the, the, the way these elder gods of the cults worship i thought that they would just be so so weak and useless there is one good thing that comes out of this let's see i'm i can throw you guys a bone here um <laughs> so obviously you guys have uh disrupted this particular op operation of the silver twilight i'd say right yes like pretty think, spectacularly yes yeah yeah you think maybe their meetings are a little disrupted now um here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna give each of you 1d6 sanity points as a as a as a reward Oh, yeah, everybody, roll, everybody roll a d6 and add it to your current sanity and we'll work out all the details later as far as getting sparky out of six all right damn good roll all right the doctor, wow the doctor gets back six everybody gets back six even those even you guys that have zero you mean two. like i said yeah right, like well, i said I we'll work two. out the details at some point, you kind of come out of it, to some extent. I guess. Family has good lawyers. They'll get me into an into mental institution. That's where oh. I need to be. I'm crazy after all. All right. Did did ever did everybody get back D six? No, yeah, I four. got a two. Okay. I got a six. All right. Back so four. here's the bad news. Uh oh. My book says, if the investigators met Carl Stanford again, which you guys did, and he eluded them once again, everybody loses one D... Everybody make a sanity check, actually. What? Yeah. I want to be back down to zero. Maybe. Well, I'm an auto <laughs> fail. Everybody make a sanity check. I All right. I, I, I didn't make mine. I missed it by... Why do we have to lose sanity for six going points? To I only this? missed mine by six points. I got a seventy-three. I missed it. All right. If you missed it, everybody loses a D three. Uh -huh. If you missed it, <laughs> he has eluded you once again. He's on the loose. I guess that's just gonna drive us crazier. <laughs> All right, so I lose one. All right. I lost one too. That still sucks. But I'm at one outcome. sanity. One. I'm at one. I'm at, I'm at one. San I'm at one sanity as well, man. So it's all good. <laughs> yeah. So I hey, think when, it's you, when you witness the red tongue, man, your brain's gonna. Yeah. So I think we're just gonna assume that Jacob is picked up by law enforcement and thrown in the slammer for now. Uh, you know, so we'll, we'll talk some more about that. Um, so it sounds like another character you can roll up would be an attorney. You're going to need one. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. Well, no, I, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad I made that will up. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We got to come yeah, kill you know. now. Make sure um, that will gets him. <laughs> ben, Ben Knuckles would be an option for you, Lee. Remember Ben uh, Knuckles? Or the nephew, BB Crown and Shield. Okay, there you go. Um, Sparky is institutionalized. Come to find out, um, it's actually also at a correctional facility. Um, he's been deemed uh, unstable, I guess, by the, the doctors uh, at the prison. Um, so we're going to have to deal with that. 
but Sparky's not too bad off, so he'll be he may be able to uh, to make a comeback here as long as he's not incarcerated. The yacht dude. Good. He's got family money. He's got good lawyers. Yeah. Dale. Dale. I think Dale's going to need some help. Um, because, I mean, essentially what I would do with Hale and Jacob both, since they're both almost completely insane, is just pile fucking phobias and manias on them. You know? Um, that's one thing I haven't done yet, is each of them would come out of this with some very severe man manias and phobias as a result. Uh, so it could be weeks, months, years, or never for these two. Well, yeah, I think I'm going to retire Hale just because it's going to take forever to get back up. To well, you don't, standard. yeah, you don't have a choice, really. This Your liability. Now, I will remind you that um, my other character, um, Edgar Casey, is still on the run. Man on the run. Doesn't he have some kind of crazy hatred towards the Silver Twilight? Oh, oh yeah. yes, he does. Man oh. on the run. Yeah, I have some plans for Casey. Don't worry. Dude, he's going to show up in a 2 2 with a shotgun and all bad news. <laughs> 2 2 and a shotgun. <laughs> I'm here for you. <laughs> I'll get you. For satisfaction. Oh. Satisfaction. Well, I, I must com yes. I, I must commend Dr. Van Helsing and um, Sparky for for getting through that. It's awesome. Um, yeah. And that was probably, you know, it was one of those sanity rolls. Like I said, Jacob, that was not the one to fail. Um, uh, it, 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 it works out at the end. It does. I mean, and of course, Sparky uh, would realize. Sparky would realize at some point, you know, that this terrible, horrible monstrosity that haunts your dreams came out of Lostalis Black. Um, yeah. Yeah. And when you're fighting against the, uh, when you're fighting against the old gods, I mean, you know. This is yeah, I mean, I actually is. shot Nero Lothotep right in the face. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. With, exactly. <laughs> with maximum damage at yeah. close range, it was, uh, 10 it was a it was a die roll with a 10 plus 2 yeah, and i got it all it'd be exactly. a good good story for the grandkids children <laughs> when i when grandpa pop was younger he shot near <laughs> off the temp in the face <laughs> <laughs> now he's your president yeah you know the crawl, <laughs> yeah you know the crawling chaos kids <laughs> You kids don't know nothing anymore. Go back to your idiot box. Ah. <laughs> Remember, kids, when the terrible worm creature descended upon the earth from the stars and destroyed the planet? Well, that was my fault. <laughs> no, your parents are protecting you. You're all pussies. <laughs> wow. So, That's awesome. Yeah. Time to roll up a new character or go to the backup, yep, I guess. Yeah, me too. Are we calling it? We're calling it. And like I said, we're just going to have to pick up the pieces from here on out, fellas. Maybe uh, I'll do some yeah. messaging. I'll do some messaging in Discord and we'll work, iron things out. Maybe we can get together before next session and roll up some new characters. Sure. That would be awesome, man. Here, you know. Here's my issue I, with the uh, next session. Next Wednesday, I cannot play. I will be okay. at the cabin and there's no internet. I'll be, you know, getting cabin fever. So. Okay. okay. Don't come back crazy. We need no you. problem. I, I imagine so, I mean, the next section will be more or less of an interlude. Hey, can like you a, pull yeah. up uh, Van Helsing's screen with his music just, you know, to emphasize <laughs> that he's leaving? <laughs> yeah. All right, because... What is this <laughs> crude outburst? <laughs> crude interruption. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> Awesome, <laughs> pulling up to the back of the door like that, letting loose with that shit, that was great. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. Awesome. Yeah, Van Helsing, he's one for the ages. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. All right, guys. I, I feel I feel older every time I look at him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, until next week. Yep, we'll, good uh, session. I'll, I'll put some messages. Maybe this weekend we can do some character generation or something. All right. 
All right. Later, guys. Thank you, gentlemen. That was good. All right. All right good game. All right, guys.